What up guys? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? It's the kid. 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 Double H trying to live, trying to exist, trying to stay alive, trying to do that main thing, trying to do that main thing. And so we're here for the Saturday hangout. Man, we're here for the Saturday hangout. Here for the Saturday hangout. Trying to do our thing. Trying to do our thing, man. So a few things to discuss here. A few things to, to discuss, a few things to break down and sort of, and we're just, just going to tell just what's, how the show is going to go and what we're going to do like that, man. So, um, first off, we're going to um, discuss France against Portugal, the preview, France against Portugal, because they're playing in the Nations League. I get it, Nations League is just trash. No one cares about the, about the Nations League, but just for argument's sake, it is a big game and we wanted to, to discuss that. Talk about Calvert Lewin. Should he be called Calvert Lewandowski? And is that an insult to Lewandowski for him to be called Calvert Calvin Calvert Lewandowski? Pogba is Pogba finished? Is 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 Pogba done? Man City now said that they're now going to be looking to get Messi um, next summer. So they want to try and see what's up to get Messi next summer. And we might touch on this whole Cannibal Suarez scenario of how he's been saying that oh. Um, Barcelona's board did not actually want him to be friends with Messi, how they whole handled the whole affair and sort of so it seems as if it was a very, very <laughs> messy breakup that the cannibal had with Barcelona. So we're gonna talk upon that and expand upon that. And maybe if we have some or if I care, we might take your bomb ass questions that you losers um, thankfully send over. So that is the nature of the show. That's the nature of the show. And of course, I'm joined here by a great, amazing, supreme, cool panel of guys who I am hoping will um, t- say and bring some good stuff. You know, like we, we don't want any break bombers analysis in here. So without further idealiski, um, we'll ride with our first topic, which of course is the um, France against Portugal, France against Portuguese. So this, of course, is a big Nations League game. And I think it's probably be, it's probably going to be the, the, the marquee game of the Nations League, France against Portugal. Um, and these are... First of all, I, I've, 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 I've said this many times, and I'll say it again, that I cannot think in history, for as long as I've been watching football, I don't think there has been a more talented... I'm a ham. That's bloody scary. There's not been a more talented team from top to bottom in terms of a squad like France. I mean, France, I just think are flip flipping amazing. They're, they're off the flipping chain. But Portugal seem as if these are real outsiders because Portugal have some very interesting players like HR Flicks and so forth. So I think this is a good game to show how far away are Portugal from the Claire favorites, which of course are France. So I am. I am hoping because I watched the friendly that they had against Spain, and I would definitely. I'm, I have my eye on Jao Felix. I was I was harsh on him, but I've got my eye on Jao Felix. I definitely want to see Jao Felix play in this game, and see him combine with Christian. Maybe Christian plays a striker and Jao Felix to play in in behind him, and also for France, come on, come on, come on, man. I mean, here's another young star that this guy's coming through. Same thing with um, um, Mbappe, and it is what it is. Giroud. Um, I don't want to dwell too much on Pogba because Pogba, that's a test service discussion I want to have. So with regards to this game, I think I am feeling this could be a draw. I think they will both cancel each other out, but I'm just hoping for an exciting game. But I think looking at how both teams play, how Portugal counter, the skill and the ability that France have, I'm looking at maybe like this being like a 2-2 draw. I'm seeing this a few goals, 2 all draw, that's how I'm feeling. So Vilton, how are you feeling this game for France against Portugal? Um, this game should be an interesting game. Cristiano versus the Prodigy. The way I see this game, I see both teams wait, going. Wait, 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 against the pro- Look, Chris, Cristiano is like 50-something years old, man. Relax, like he's, it's, it's, okay, relax. This is the relax, future. The future. Relax. Okay. <laughs> relax. This game is going to be a really fun game to watch. Even though it's the European Nation League, it's going to be a fun game to watch. I see the game go 2-2 cuz France are- Portugal, they kind of like fairly foot in on paper. Like they are player that can turn game like that could just turn up in the game out of nowhere. 
And Varen, I'm pretty sure Varen's gonna be in that game because Varen hasn't played for France in a while. So I'm pretty sure he's gonna be there. But the way I see this game, I, I see France attacking Portugal backline a lot. And I can see CR7, Counter. one of the cap, yeah, countering and score and scoring. It all depends how Felix is gonna play. Is he gonna have but, 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 but remember the front boy you're dealing with Didi Deschamps. Deschamps is not an attack minded ma manager, that is so true. he is a very because I think because you Ukraine are Ukraine, but against Portugal, I don't I, I would not expect France or Didi Deschamps to just send his guys to go all out attack them because he knows how dangerous they are when Portugal counter and also Didi Deschamps is a defensive minded dude, so. Yeah, I don't blame him because he has the best defensive line like that you can have. Like he does like first team is so like their depth is really insane. They don't even have Laporte or Marcel, like to be honest with you. They don't but, know the, the depth is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, the depth is crazy. But I see a draw, like you said. I see I say two two. Cristiano might score a brace and the prodigy might get one and Giroud might actually score in this game. I I actually see Giroud scoring in this game. Okay, okay. Uh, Bidi Cole, France, Portugal. How are you seeing this game? Um, I actually think that um, Portugal is gonna win. How think, so? Why so? Um, they have a good blend of team chemistry and cohesion. Um, they have big game players. You know, I'm not saying France don't have big game players, but I think Portugal have a lot of big game players. And I think, um, for me personally, I think Fernando Santos is a better manager than Deschamps. That's that's how I see it. Um, now, yeah, I think I think it's gonna be it's gonna be either um, I think it's gonna be a Portugal win or a draw. That's how I see it. Um, do you have a do you have a, a, a scoreline? Yeah, to be honest, I don't want to give score. Like uh, what I know is, I think it's going to be a draw or a win. But for, what for, I will say is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what I will say is, France isn't that strong. I mean, I know they have a good team and so forth, but a lot of times they try to sit back and play on the counter attack, and you can't do that with Portugal. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because if you do that, Portugal is going to keep on attacking you. And eventually find a way to get the ball inside the net. So um Kamavinga, yes, he's a good young player. Okay, I give him credit for that. But I still think that um Portugal have a really good young crop of talent um coming up. That's how okay. I see it. So, yeah. Okay. Um undisputed man. Portugal, France man, how do you see this game? Well, it should have been a good game, but I don't think it will be because both coaches are quite negative, in my opinion. Given the amount of talent they have, they're both really negative. Uh, I watched Portugal against Spain, and they looked awful, to be honest. That midfield, I think it was Neves, Moutinho, Renato Sanchez. It was just terrible. It was, it, at least in the first half. I didn't see the second half. but And um, as for the score, I think um, it'll, Portugal will uh, shithouse a 1-0 win. I think Fernandez will die if Cristiano will score the penalty. That would be my guess. And, uh, yeah. Also, one more thing. Uh, you said this is the most talented squad you've ever seen. Yes. I think man for man, starting 11, this team doesn't sniff Spain 2010. Doesn't even sniff it. I said squad. Not first 11 squad. Spain 2010 had David Silva on the bench. Saying, yeah, but okay, he, he oh, okay, David Silva, and who, who else? <laughs> Fabregas, Fabregas was on the bench. But was Fa no, he wasn't on the bench. Yeah. No, I thought no, was 2010, he was on the bench. I think 2010 was on the bench. But wait, my thing is the depth you're giving me Fabregas, you're giving me David Silva. I right, okay, Kamavenga, look at how people are preaching about him. Benzema isn't even really making this. Even make, making the yeah. team. Martial doesn't even make the team. Laporte doesn't even make, make the team. Zuma doesn't even make the team. Upamecano doesn't even make the, the team. I think Ribery sorry. hasn't made the um, team for 10 no, years. No, Upamecano got an injury at uh, HH. Wait, no, is no, it? No, but I'm saying that he, even this... when he's fit, he doesn't even make the team. That, that's, Wait, that's, that's are you the saying issue. this French team is the greatest talented team you've ever seen? Is that what you're squad. telling me? In terms of squad. In terms of... 06 oh, Brazil? Over 06 oh, Brazil? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Squad. It's like if people are... There's a difference between your first team and squad. In terms mm -hmm. of your first team, nobody is sniffing 
the 06 team, 06 um, Brazil, 98 Brazil, 2000 Holland, 27 Spain. Squad, i.e. the amount of talent you can pull from. I think, yeah. sorry, I think Spain has more depth in midfield. Spain had more depth in midfield. France has more depth in defense and attack, I would say. Yeah, also, but, Spain had... Yeah, sorry. No, also, no, no, no. Okay, but, but as you said, if we're not doing it by, by numbers, you just said Spain had more depth in midfield, I agree with you. But France have more depth in defense and attack. So really, that's really more numbers. So I'm saying... in Spain the, had a better goalkeeper too, I would say. Oh, yeah, yeah, for, for, oh, yeah, for, for sure. But, but, but the, the amounts of people that... High-quality people that aren't even making this... Put it this way. Was there yeah. anybody as good as Benzema who didn't make the team for Spain? Uh, or who, not that I can or remember. Who was, no. Or who wasn't even in the squad? Was there anybody as good as Benzema or Laporte who didn't even make the squad for um, was, Spain? Was Torres there in 2010? No, I, I think he was. He was. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he, he was. He was there in 20, yeah, and, yeah. and 2012. I think he was there in 2012. So, you know, it's like that France squad. I mean, Yes, that Spain squad was good, but, but the France squad, I mean, like, the amount of talents they have, both the, specifically young talents, is insane. And I didn't even mention the, the, the flipping oos. All right, LB, give it to me, man. Um, what are we saying for um, France and Portugal? Yeah, um, I'm certainly looking forward to this game, despite the fact that it's a, it's a Nations League, you know, almost like a friendly match. Um, you know, two quality sides, replay of the 2016 Euro um, final. I think it will be a, a two-two draw. Um, I think we're going to expect to see some goals. Um, hopefully, a high-quality game. And just going off um, that previous point with um, France being a team with uh, the most sort of depth, squad depth. I, uh, I totally agree with that. I'd say I was go as far as saying that they've got more depth than um, the the German side of. Um, 2014 and the the Spain side of 2010. Mm. Um, I mean, you look at all these young players. I mean, 20 in 2018, Rabio didn't even make the um, the the World Cup squad. So Rab- Rabio didn't make the squad. Benzema yeah. wasn't in the squad. Martial wasn't in the squad. Laporte yeah. wasn't in the squad. Yeah, and these young talent uh, has just you know they've just come from nowhere. You know, uh, Mbappe, um, the Ooze. Um, Kama, um, Kamavinga is now anyone coming through. Um, Hussam Uwar as well is now coming through. Yeah. So they've really turned it around since 2010. Yes, it's been 10 years, but um, if there's any side that is uh, is a chance to defend their World Cup title, I would say it's France, this current squad of players. For sure. Which, but, but as I said again, they won't because it was this, it was the exact same story that happened with Brazil in 06. I think the issue that France have is there's so much talent Deschamps won't really know how to choose the team. But the, the the thing that is in France's favor is Deschamps is so stubborn, he will stick to a specific team. And he will always mm-hmm. speak to speak to the alumni. So he won't chop and change and experiment. He'll be like, no, these are my guys I trust. This is who mm-hmm. I will always pick. So and I'm Ham. What are we saying? France against Portugal. Um I think I think Portugal is going to win. Wait, wait, wait! What the hell is this? <laughs> what is this? Hey, man, we all we all suffer through. Um, like the I'm just going through a hard time, man. After what happened to Liverpool, so I just need comedy in my life. <laughs> uh, great, great, I mean, I mean, great film and great performance, anyway. But I mean, not Sokshe. The guy's a clown. But the actual, the actual <laughs> Walker Phoenix. Okay, look, France against Portugal. Talk to me. Yeah, um, I, I don't read France that much, man. I think Portugal can do it. I think their team has got like a, a lot of young, uh, good talent in them, as well with some very outstanding uh, veterans like Ronaldo and Moutinho. So yeah, I think I think they can get maybe a one 0 or two 0 So and also, why don't you rate France so highly then? Um, I, I just don't see it. Like I don't re- like nah, man. I don't see. I don't see like how good they actually are. Like they've got Mbappe, some Mbappe, Martial. They, they, they've got Mbappe, oh. but that's all. That's all they've got. They've got Mbappe. That's it. Griezmann isn't as good as he was. Pogba's not as good as he was. 
I don't even know who's going to be playing tomorrow. Wait, 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 so wait. Like... Is, is, there, is there a TV in your background? Like I can hear something in the background. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me turn it off. Um, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really confident in Spain. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. It was actually, I, I, we, we, we didn't say Spain. We said France, but, but fair enough. Um, France. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know what you meant, man. Cassius, France, Portugal. Talk to me. So since France are playing at home, I see France taking the taking the three points by one goal. I don't have a scoreline, but I know I think France will win by one goal. But I think Portugal will play better overall throughout the throughout the game. Maybe have some more chances than France, but um, you know Portugal's defense doesn't really, at least like the the back line doesn't really convince me. I mean they still have Pepe is like their their main defender. Um, against Spain, they had a guy, I think Ruben Semedo. I've never heard of him, and uh, he didn't he didn't really impress me in that game against Spain. So, um, yeah, I think Portugal will play well, and maybe they'll they'll create more chances. But I think France playing at home will will have the advantage. Okay, um, Abdullahi. Yep, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. We can hear you. Mm, for me, I think um, both France and then Portugal, both of them have a a good squad, and I think uh, I was the Portugal and the Spain matches in the first half, they were like awful. I think in the second half, they were more attacking and more flair. Before Joan Felix came, there was a chance in which Ronaldo gave him um, Renato Sanchez. In, in, like, yeah, 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 where he hit the bar. So, also, Cristiano hit the bar yeah. as well. So, Cristiano hit the bar. So, I think they Portugal play more of like a counter attacking football. We suit Portugal more than them. Wait, 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 wait. Are, you, wait. are you on the road? I'm at work. Okay, 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 Karen, Karen. So, Karen. which fit um, Portugal more than Spain, um, than um, France? Because France like to play more like um, free flow, but I don't trust them, the, um, what's called the, the, the champ to play free flow in football. I do not trust that guy. It's like more of a pragmatic coach. I think I'm going to rely more on them when now do because this uh, is going to. They're going to more play. Yo, 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 you're breaking up, man. Wait, go, get to a bit, a area with better connection because we're losing you. Can you hear me now? Go to an area with, with better connection and we'll come back to you. Your connection is bad. I test. What, what do we say in France, Portugal? What do we say? Yeah, I think I think France are going to win this. I think France are going to win this. And I I do agree with your point that that this is probably, um, of all time, the best ever squad because mm. a lot of people are mentioned in Spain. But you have to remember, Spain was only in midfield. They had no strikers. France is literally, they have depth in every single position, defence. They have Varane and Umtiti, and then after that, Laporte and Longley, and then after that, Obamacano, and then like, and Zuma. And even in midfield, and Zuma. Kempembe. Kempembe. France is literally Kempembe. in every position, they have depth. Spain was just in midfield, so yeah, I think France are going to beat Portugal, and yeah, I do agree there. It's probably the best depth I've ever seen. So, 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 so you don't give Portugal a chance? Don't, don't you think that if um, he starts Jao Felix, Bruno Fernandes, and they force France to come at them, that you don't think that they could maybe counter them using Jao Felix and Cristiano? I don't think so, because you said, earlier on, you said this is the best um, of a Portugal team, I think. I, I, if no, 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 no. Best, wrong, best but... Portugal team was Euro 2000. That was the best team. Oh, okay. These guys are pretty good, but I still say the best team Portugal had was that Euro 2000 team. Yeah, but anyway, for me, even France's second team and third team would probably smoke this Portugal team. Like France, yeah, they. I think I think they're gonna win. They have too much talent for them. Okay, okay. So yeah, okay. So that's the thing. again for me. As for me, as I say again, I still say it's probably gonna be a two all draw for me personally. I think it's gonna be a two all draw. Um, so. Very briefly, very briefly, um, because I think some people mentioned that England are also playing Belgium, which I think is also going to be quite an interesting game as well, England against Le Belgique. So what are we saying for England against Belgium? Um, so just very, very briefly. For me, if, if for me, England, Belgium, um, I see Belgium. I see Belgium edging that two one. I see Belgium edging that two one. I mean, anyone can jump in. England, Belgium. Um, Belgium's gonna win comfortably. I see KDB have a field day because I just don't trust the England team. It's just there's just something about the England national team. 
Well, I can't. Well, I can't really say that because they made it to the semifinal of the 2018 World Cup. But I just see Belgium edging it because this England team is just so. It's like there's no chemistry there. I don't. I don't know how to like say it. It's just when you watch mm. them against that. Um, it was what last month I think in the UEFA Nation League they were playing mm. against this team. The way they won, they won the game because Ryan Sterling got the penalty in the last minute. But I don't know. Maybe Gareth Southgate has to do something with the squad. Like I just, I just don't rate England as high like that. I, I think Belgium's gonna win two one. Okay, okay. Um, and and so who who else? Any any thoughts? England Belgium. I don't understand why England keeps playing three at the back. Like I genuinely don't get that. It doesn't suit the squad, in my opinion. No, think- and, and we, we, again, I'll give it to you, but it's very good you bring that up because, and this is the thing, you have to know where your strength is. I think three at the back, you have to know how to play that formation and that defensive setup. England, I don't think that they have the defenders who have the skill level or the psychology or the mentality to understand how to play that three at the back. So it could be problematic, but sorry, continue on Uh Yeah, Oh, sorry, what else was I going to say? Yeah, I don't know. I think I think it started with Gareth Southgate at, in like 2017. I think it was Antonio Conte who mm-hmm. won the Premier League that year with three at the back. Yeah, three, four, and, three. And yeah. he started it then, and he hasn't dropped it, um, which, which I don't understand because no serious team right now plays three at the back apart from Inter, and they keep failing in Europe. So uh, I don't know. Okay, so something I want to. Hello. Also, also. Yeah, okay, yeah. B- okay, Bidiko, you wanted to say something? England, Belgium, thoughts? Mm, I think um, I don't trust Witzel. <laughs> I just don't like Witzel as a player. I don't know why. Um, I just don't like him as a player. I just don't know. I think I think England will win. Martinez is uh, really, really awful. Uh, he's an awful manager. No, he's Sorry not. Wait, 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 nah. but didn't, nah, he, didn't he guide Belgium to third at the World Cup? No, it was Thierry Henry. It was Thierry Henry. It wasn't him. What? It was Thierry Henry took over him. Monaco. Monaco almost got relegated. No, 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 no. you cannot honestly tell me that Thierry Henry, who people <laughs> said uh, messed up with Monaco, where he eventually got sacked, was the reason. So you tell me that Thierry Henry was the reason Belgium came third at the World Cup. Are you honestly promoting that brick analysis? Okay, so what I'm saying is, right, this is the thing, okay, yes, Martinez had a part to play on it, but I also think Henry also had a a big role to play in it, you understand what I'm trying to say? He knew how to get the best out of Lukaku. How do you know, but but, but, but how do you know this, though? Like, were you... were you in the Belgian camp where you saw them in training? So you know for a fact that Thierry Henry was the reason why Lukaku. I mean, do you know this as do you do you have factual evidence that this is this is the case? I mean, everything on the pitch shows. That's that's how I that's how I. Know. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well. Not, well. Sorry. No, that's 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 not good enough evidence. But I'm sorry, bro. Nah. Nah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Look, I want to move things on now because I want to talk about. Can I want to talk about. Guys? Yes, we can hear you. Can hear you. Look, hey, I want to talk about. Okay. Yes. Let me speak, man. I want to no 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 because this can this will blend it well with the England Belgium. Let's talk about Calvert Lewin. Okay. Let's talk about Calvert Lewin. So here's the thing: people have been saying Calvert Lewandowski, some loser moron with no friends said he's um, better than R9. Um, so there's been a lot of crap that's been said because he has had a great start to the season. Now this is my thoughts on Calvert Lewin. Quality start of the season. I think he already he already decent striker. Um, before last season. But the thing about it is, people are being far too reactionary. I cannot tell you whether this guy is a truly elite striker because it's only been a few games. I don't give a damn how many goals he has scored in three, four games. I don't care. I'm not going to use three, four games to now say, yeah, Cavalier is world class. He's now at the same standard as Benzema and so forth. So the question here is, how good is Calvert Lewin? And do you believe that this guy can go on and develop to be one of the best strikers in the world? Or is it a case of flash in the pan, one season wonder, in a few years people will forget about him? Vilton. Man, to be honest with you, I think he's just on a hot winning streak right now. It's just, it just all talk right now. They're just hyping him. Because this guy was so... Like, he's not a bad player. He just... Kevin Lewin wasn't scoring goals like that 
two seasons ago for Everton like that. I I, I don't know. Maybe Ancelotti changed his game a little bit, but I don't don't put him in the same sentence as R9 and Lewandowski. That doesn't make any logical sense at all. I think because he's from England, maybe maybe that's why the journalism are uh, hyping him up. But Calvin Lewin, no, he's nowhere near Lewandowski. That's not even that's that's disrespectful. That's very disrespectful. Putting ca- the same Calvin Lewin name next to Lewandowski name, it doesn't make any sense. But let's just see how the season is because it's only been what four games, right? We're not even halfway to the season yet. Yeah. Because anybody can get hot. It's all about can you sustain it? Can you sustain it to the entire season? He could even have a good season. That was the same thing with... He reminds me of Jamie Vardy a lot. Because in 2016, I thought Jamie Vardy was just... Leicester was just having a really good season. But Jamie Vardy surprised me. He's, he's, he's kept on he kept on going. He kept on going. He kept on going. Let's see if he's still going to keep on doing that. I'm not going to say he's in he's low on dust. It doesn't make any sense at all. Okay. Um... Joe Spurson says, H.H. didn't watch Brazil. Shanks, my name, I completed 18 dribbles against Bolivia. Joe Spurson, you're sad. Don't come to me when Neymar wins a World Cup or Cup of America. Don't give me any of that. We did against Bolivia trash. That's 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 low. Undisputed. Calvin Lewin, man. Okay, o- so, overrated? Uh, it's been four games. So, to be honest, it's way too early to make any conclusion. If... If I had to say, I would probably say he's he's just average. It's just he he might have a good season. I mean, Danny Ings had a good season last season, didn't he? Mm. So, but but do you think there's a potential for him to have a great season or maybe even great seasons? Do you see something where oh maybe Ancelotti will unlock a truly amazing striker? He might reach Jamie Vardy levels, like genuinely good over a decent period of time. But no, I don't think. Like, even Harry Kane, I can't see him ever reaching that level, let alone, like, true trap strikers. He's decent. He's all right. That's everything. That's all. All right. LB, Calvin Lewin. I'm not going to say that he's going to be the, the best striker, you know, in in the world come a couple of years' time, nor that he's going to um, not be able to sustain this um, form that he's been able to, to deliver. But... Um, yeah, like what Undisputed was saying, it's just way too early to say anything. If we sort of go off previous, or what's happened previously with Jamie Vardy and all those other players, I mean, it's shown that, you know, you can become more than a, a one-season sort of wonder and really sort of capitalise on your performances and take your career to, you know, to great heights. But, you know, to say that um, he's going to be, you know, the, less, the next Lewandowski or even be compared to Lewandowski, it's, uh, it's, um, it's quite a quite embarrassing i think um and i think you know the thing with Lewandowski is he uh he he started to i think um really come into the scene when he was a, a very similar age um 24 25 i think when he was with mm. obviously dortmund um but yeah as i said it's still very very early to to make any sort of conclusion so but what do you see potential for him to be a great striker or too early to say. Um, no, I, I see that he. I think that he has the potential to become a, a good striker, but in terms of how good, um, we're just going to have to wait and see. All right. Um, Ahmad, cover Lewin. Yo, I agree with whoever said that. Um, that is similar to Jamie Vardy. I feel like it's just like if Vardy had reached his 2015 form at a younger age, I feel like it's going to be the same type of type of thing and uh, I mean for him it's going to be a struggle because is he going to start in front of Harry Kane and all that and I don't think England can play with two strikers so I don't yeah. I don't, really know, I don't know what the fuss is about him but his, I, I think he's pretty good I think just because he scored 13 goals last season doesn't mean much because he's still like 21 because I know he was playing in the under 19 World Cup about two years ago so he's pretty good so, but do you? So, what kind of season do you think he'll have for Everton this season? Do you really think that he can end up near the top of the goal scoring charts, or next six, seven games will go on a barren run, and they will just say, "Hey, man, look, everybody just overreacted with how we were rating this dude." Or do you think no, this guy can actually be a pretty damn good striker? No, nah, I mean, I think he can get 20, 20 EPL goals this season. So that's like what top five, most likely. So that will definitely top five EPL strikers this season. Okay, all right. Abdullahi, Calvin Lewitt, man. Is uh, he I worth think, the hype? Uh, 
Dominic Avelemel is a very good striker, though, but we don't kind of rate him that much. I, I think I remember the interview Carlo Ancelotti said, made. He said they want to make it. They want to make him Filippo Izaghi of AC Milan. I was like, during the Izaghi era, there was no, there was offside, but there was no VR, there was no this technology, though. So we have to chill about a little bit of uh, Dominic Avelemel, but it's been really good last season. I think it's called 19 good. I'm not sure. I need to check. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure how many goals he scored last season. It was really good that season. I, I think this season is because. We can lost you, Abdullahi. We lost you. We lost you, bro. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Go for it. Okay. I said we have to wait and see how consistent he can be from now that he's been scoring goals now till the end of the season. We have to wait and see. But Asselet is doing a very good job. He's kind of building Dominic Cavalier very high. Like, I, I'm, I'm impressed with the way he's playing um, Cavalier with. Um, uh, what's called Ames Rodriguez together and Richard Lisson now. I said, let's so, really be so, 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 how good support. do you think he can be? What do you think his What do you think his ceiling is? What do you think his ceiling is? I'm gonna say 23 goals this season. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah. Bidi Ko, 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 um, so I think I need to see him in the Champions League. Um, that's not happening this season. No, it, it's not happening this season. Um, but what I will say is I need to see him do it against big clubs. Mm-hmm. I need to see him do it in the Champions League. Yeah, and then obviously... Week, so then you, uh, it's kind of show himself. Let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I know they play... So he needs... In, in a game like that, show yeah, me... Yeah, that's, that's 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 a big game. So he needs to... He, those yeah. are the games, so he, he needs to show up in those big games. For you in to those give big him some games. respect. For me, that's, that's how I see it. I also think that in the Euros... Euros too. If he can show something, the Euros that would be, you know, amazing. Um, but again, currently, right now, I mean, it's so early in the season. HH, you know, if you know, you, there's so many games to play for. So, you know, I think it's just too early that we put the hype on him because you know he might even end up as a one season wonder, and then next you know, or even like just go for a good run for let's say ten or. 13 games and then the rest of the games he's just awful so yeah that's how i see it now aj you have a question aj yeah yeah people are saying he's going to be a one season wonder but i can't think of a recent england striker who picked up form like all of a sudden and they just did because his english it's not like he's you know from a different league and he has to adapt it's like harry kane at one point we thought harry kane was going to be a one season wonder and we thought it was the same for jamie vardy but the only one I can think of is like Ricky Lambert, which was ass. Was ass. But but what about Charlie Austin? Charlie Austin too in um, what's we call it Southampton, he had I believe fifteen games in in scoring no, but, run. Yeah, no, but but also my thing is, let's see what Danny Ings does this season because Danny Ings was right. very prolific last season. Now yeah, let's yeah. just see because for me I feel that Danny Ings is a one season wonder. I don't consider him a multiple season. Striker, but as we've seen with Hurricane, aha, this has been probably one of England's best strikers since Shearer and Owen. Um, how many, so, goals, how many goals does Danny Ings have to score for you to not think he's not a one season wonder? Oh, for me, I mean, you need to at the very least get 15 to 16 goals at the, at the, at the very least. 15 right, to get 16 it. goals. So, because then if you get if you're getting if you consider getting the 15, 16, 17, which is what. Kane, Obama, and Aguero do, then I know that, aha, you're the real deal. So, but if you end up with like, what's 10, 11 goals, 12 goals, and I'm like, ah, okay, maybe that season was just, you just popped off that whole season. It's it. Remember the hype they were given to Pookie from Norwich? <laughs> no, no I, no, I was hyping him up as well. Pookie. I know, yeah. I know. Um, yeah. I'm Ham. Talk to me, Calvin Lewin. Um, like, Calvert Lewin is good, guys. I don't know why. Why are you talking like like Calvert Lewin could easily do what um what Kane did uh for England and for and for Tottenham. I think for Everton, he could be like their version of Kane. Um, but I, I um I don't think he's gonna play tomorrow. I think Kane's gonna play tomorrow, though. He is. You see, the thing is, um, Tammy and and um. And Calvert Lewin are similar because they they're about the same age group and they and they're like the first number nines of their age group to break out for England. But the difference between them is that Tammy doesn't get any game time. I think for talent, Tammy is better, but Calvert Lewin, I think um last season I felt as if he was like more of like a, a crouch 
So I didn't really think he was going to be much. But this season, I think I'm starting to see that this guy is going to be a real monster for many years to come because he's got speed, he's so, huge, and so he does the dirty do work so that uh, managers... Bro, how good do you think Alvaro Wayne can be then? You know, you know, honestly, so you saying like he can be an elite striker? Like, if if he makes the right moves, like if he makes moves like um, cheap promoting, I think this guy could be like breaking <laughs> records. <laughs> I am him, man. You have peaked the hangout again, man, for the fifth consecutive Saturday. Man. What's the bl- what? Who the hell did you just say? True promoting. Did you just say true promoting? Yeah. If he makes moves like that guy, I mean, I think he can do some crazy stuff, but I don't think he will, though. I think he'll stay in England for the rest of his career. All right. All right. Cassius, man. Calvin Lewin, man. Talk to me. So, I mean, Calvin Lewin, I think he's a good player. I don't think he's going to be like a one-season wonder. I think he can be consistent at a, a decent level for his career. I agree with I am him. I mean, he's, he's in my eyes, I think he's almost the exact same player as Tammy Abraham. You know, they're both tall, you know, they, they have, um, they have a good instincts inside the box, but I don't think either of them will ever become elite strikers. So what's, is his, what would his ceiling be then? I think his ceiling is Jimmy Vardy, just below a Jimmy Vardy. So you're saying he he'll never be a world class striker. No, he won't. He, I think he'll be like a consistent player in the Premier League. Let's see. Let's say he he stays at Everton for his entire career. I think he could probably average like you know ten to fifteen mm-hmm. goals a season, something like that. But I don't think I don't even think he'll get to like Jamie Vardy levels because he's a you know he's good in the box, he's good in the air. But you know I don't really see anything more than that. All right, uh, I test. Wait, it's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have a question for you. You say you got to win the World Cup, right, for you to be a horseman for you, right? Okay. Let's say Calvin Lewin becomes top scorer in the 2022 World Cup and he wins the World Cup with England. Would you put him as a horseman? No, because I didn't have to look at his whole entire career. Okay. It's like, why why isn't Iniesta a horseman? Why isn't Javi a horseman? So that's just the recurrence, but then it's about how good of you are you as a player? What has your impact been throughout your entire career? So, because okay. then I could just make Abeloa or Stefan Givash horseman, which is never happening. So, <laughs> um, or Ramos. <laughs> yeah, I test. Um, Calvin yeah. Lewin, man, can he can he Calvin be a goal? Go. Go. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I heard the same things about Tammy Abraham last season. Like, let's be real. What what Calvin Lewin is doing for Everton is cute. It's cute, but that's his level. Let's be real. He, he's a good player for Everton. He's a very, very good player for Everton, but I think people need to relax when they say go, or I don't believe he's ever going to even be a player for a top six team or a, a European team. I think he's a very, very good player for Everton, though. Just like just like Danny Ings. He's he's not good enough to be in the in a top six team, but he's a very, very good player for Southampton, so you're, that, I think so you're putting level. him at Danny Ings's level then. So you don't think he's slightly better, than, or he can be better than Danny Ings? Uh, no, I think Everton's his level. I think Everton is his level. I don't believe, which which, which is nothing to be ashamed of. I think no, he'll be not. a very decent Premier League striker, but not top six or European level. That's my opinion on it. Okay. All right. So let me just take a view this super chat. So wait, 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 wait. Easy, easy. Well, let me just hit the super chats. So from Just Bestin, he says Calvin Lewin is giving me drug ball vibes. Baller. Just Bestin, you're a, you're a moron. You're you're, you're a moron. So don't do that. Um, the Verge that give a super chat says a seven one year. F you Liverpool. I'm out. Hashtag Hala Madrid. We ride. The Verge. Of course, um, please, man. please, 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 don't tell me that. You've stopped supporting Liverpool because of that game, and you're now a Real Madrid fan. Please don't, because that would. Because I think if we continue to promote that this whole notion of guys changing clubs, I think it, it will make this channel look very, very um, unfortunate. Abdullah, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was listening to Ayam talking about him having but last season, Ancelotti was there. 
but there was there was not Abdullah Dukore, Alan, Ahmed Rodriguez, but at least it's just got like I think 19 goals. I'm not I need to check the stats to see how many goals he scored in the EPL. But this this season he has he has left up where he started last season and he's been doing consistently well. That's what I said. But but we need to see what he does at the end of the season. That's that's the key thing. Yeah, but let you look, we need to look, look at this thing now. Ancelotti so is the top manager. It's not like a brick of him, maybe like someone like a PE teacher like Lampa. I don't so wait, I don't I don't give a damn. I I know Ancelotti is a great manager. So are you telling me that Ancelotti will turn him into a world class striker? Is that, is that what you're saying? Ancelotti will improve Cabet Lewis a lot. How because by how much? Are, are you not saying he's going to be a world class striker? When you have a top manager in your team, you you can as a striker you can confidently say, "Yes, I have this manager that can improve me." I, I keep saying it. Then, t- then, then how good can he be? Tell me, how good can Calvert Lewin be? At Liverpool, it's different than the guy him standing on the Man City. I'm standing in Liverpool is class, class, class A brick in Liverpool. Guy him standing in Man City now. I'm gonna put him in. TF. Wait, 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 Abdullah. He asked you a very simple question. How good do you believe Calvert Lewin can be? Hurricane, okay. Aguero, R9, Lewandowski, Shevchenko. How good can he be? Like Arkane. Yes. Because that's how good he is. Because Imagine how good he'd be under Pep. Under Pep, I think Abelio will, will be much, much better because you have a world-class coach who can train you week in and week out. Who will make you better. You have a better player in your team. You have a very top, you have a top, top-tier coach in Ancelotti who will make you better every time. So you have to rate Abelio not just because this is a, like one season. It's not, he has done, he did the same thing last season. He scored goals for them last season. That's why not having Ahmed Rodriguez and this kind of player with him. But okay, now they have okay. a creative outlet. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, all right. So, look, man, let's move on now to the next topic. And this one is a very interesting one. Labil. Paul Labil Pogba. Deary me, deary me. So, let me just preface by, by just giving a little bit of background. So, international duty. Pogba was obviously... Um, asked, you know how people can blow things up, but he was asked by the press, like, you know what, you know, do you still Real Madrid and everything? And he said, you know, yeah, you know, it's still a dream to play for Real Madrid, and and but I'm still a United player now, I'm respectful to United, but you know, it is always a dream to try and play for Real Madrid. <sighs> I'll be real with you, I will still say this, and I will come to you say this in terms of ability, of just pure ability, Pogba over De Bruyne. All day, every day. And I'm sticking by that. But I don't care about you, what your ability is. I care about what have you done for me lately. How well are you playing right now? Hazard, ability-wise, is top three. But that doesn't mean anything. How are you playing right now? And Pogba is pretty much trash. And he has been pretty trash for United. And I don't understand how that player can step foot at a Real Madrid, Real Madrid or even a Juventus. But then some people will say, well, it's the trash players around it that are making him like this. Don't worry, I test, I'll come to you, I test, just relax, I'll come to you. I know, I know, I know you want to speak on this. So my thing here is this, is that, is Pogba, that we know, the supremely talented player, is he finished, is he done, i.e. he will never become relevant again. As the, his last piece of relevancy was that 2018 World Cup. Or do you believe that Pogba, can somehow gain relevancy in the world and not look like a brick, which is what he's looking at right right now. And if he is to become relevant, what do you think he needs to do? Does he need to force him off to Real Madrid? Does he need to force him to defenses? Does he need to get Ole Gunnar Solskjaer sacked and a proper manager? Where do we stand with Puppet? Because I am worried. I am worried that this extremely talented player might be done and finished. Vilton, Pogba. Pogba is an interesting breed because I've said it when he was at Juve. How you go from going to the Champions League in 2015, you go to Manchester United with a club that has no vision, that had no plan of so, sort of anything, but you join them because of the brand, because how big they are. Now your coach is a brick because he's scored 99 game winner in the 99 in the, in the 1999 Champions League final because he scored that. The Manchester United fan think he's the savior that's gonna that's gonna reverse all their damage. Pogba to me, I still say I still pick Pogba over KDB. KDB, you never been in a CL final, World Cup final, Euro final. So don't talk to me. Show me your medals. So, but, but what is the issue with with Pogba? Though? Is it that he he needs to leave United or is yeah, it that he, he needs to leave United? Badly? See, if we have a to get him on loan, I would love to see what he does. If we can get him alone, because I don't want to buy Pogba right now, I would rather 
loan him and see what he does with us. But at the same time, though, do we, much, do we really need Pogba? Because we're looking at Kovenga right now. We have Valverde. We have Isco. Madrid is still playing pretty good right now. Madrid, obviously, we, we're going to replace Madrid, but I wouldn't mind having Pogba on my team. Pogba is a really talented player. Yo, yo, wait, 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 I think you're maybe a bit so close to your mic. I'm hearing a lot of static and movements around with your mic. Okay, okay. So maybe if you just I'm get away from your mic yeah. and everything. So, okay, so just run off and then I'll go. So, so, do you still believe Pogba can still be world-class and still be, be, be relevant? Yeah, of course. He just needs to leave old gunner. Like, all he has to will is not the manager for it. Because when he plays for France, he plays like a, tro- like a really world-class player. So... I'm not gonna say all oh, all gunner is the sole reason why it could be, it could just be he doesn't want to be at Manchester United anymore. The fact that this guy says Real Madrid is still a dream, maybe he still maybe he thinks my time is up. Like United is not going anywhere, so I might okay. as well leave. Okay, okay. Undisputed man, Pogba, give it to me. He needs to leave as soon as possible. I think all these tactics. Here's the thing, right? Pogba, Pogba's best position is the left side of a three-man midfield. Uh, right now, man, you are playing 4-2-3-1 with Fernandes, obviously, as the 10. And Pogba, he can't play in a two-man midfield, man. He, he just can't. Obviously, with France, he had, at the World Cup, he had Kante and Matuidi. Mm-hmm. At Juve, he had, uh, I think, Vidal and Marquisio. He needs those players around. And also, and, and also Pirlo as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. obviously, Pirlo didn't do much defensive work, obviously, mm. but yeah, still. Pirlo as well. And, like... At Man United, who has he behind him? Like, if he wants to bump forward, he has Matic, who is old, who he has McTominay. Who the hell is Scott McTominay? Who is that guy? Hey, man, throw some respect on Scotland, man. He's pride of Scotland, pride of, of haggis and kilts. I don't know. And, and, like, the thing with Pogba is he's amazing on the ball. Like, he is genuinely amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I can't, I don't understand how anyone can deny that. His, you can't. The, the skills he can do. His vision, his passing, the kind no, of no, passes no, but, 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 he can but, but, do. As I said, you see, that's why you're in the morning. This is what I've always said. People say, oh, no, you're, you're, you're coming up with excuses. It's not ex- excuses. It's that, this is what you just said. He cannot be the main midfielder. So especially, he can't be in the two. He's, he is a free-roaming midfielder who can move around. So you, he has to play with a Tony Cruz a Modric, a some somebody who stays and sticks in the midfield that allows him the freedom to roam, and that is maybe how the you one get to Pogba. Yeah, maybe the one weakness that he has is he's he's quite bad off the ball. Let's be real. His positioning, his defensive awareness, he's clumsy when he tackles as well. His stamina, to be honest, is not that good. He tends to really gas out easily, and but like on the ball, he's amazing. So you should play to his strengths. He can be he can be an amazing player. Maybe my one worry is that his injury, he had quite a bad injury, I think, after the World Cup. I'm not sure, what, was it a foot injury? Mm. He, he looks slower now, so I think that, that might be my main concern. But if, if the injury is not a long-term one, it doesn't affect him, he can still be an amazing player for Juve or for Real. Okay, okay. Um, the Verge says, thank you for the super chat of The Verge. Pogba is not Real Madrid quality. Zizou, stay away, bro. That's harsh because my thing is, you're looking at Pogba in the crap fest that is boy Chester divided. But if Pogba is surrounded in a better team, best manager, better players, you may see a better player as well. Ahmad, Pogba, give it to me. I mean, yo, I've been a fan of Pogba for a long time, but like, I just feel like Madrid don't need him. I don't know where he, wa- he wants to go to Madrid, obviously, because it's Madrid. I mean, he would have never said he wants to go to Chelsea. Their standards, their levels to this, bro different standards but like um no nah, i don't think we need pogba like we have odegaard we have we have so many mi- other midf- i'd have um, casemiro and odegaard in a midfield three over pogba i don't want pogba anywhere near madrid midfield what about on loan yo we can't uh, well, no one's gonna get pogba on loan man you are, they spent 90 million on him and clearly they don't even have money to buy Sancho, so they're gonna sell him into the so, no, he has one year. He has one year. This Ahmad, is gonna live. Wait, 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 Ahmad, 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 Ahmad. If <laughs> if he was, wait, wait. Let me ask you. Chill, chill. If he was, let's just create scenario. If he was available on loan, would you take him on loan, or you still wouldn't take him on loan? Nah, because I feel like if we took him on loan, we'd have to play him because he's Pogba, right? Uh, and I feel like because he's French, Zidane would have a preference, and he put him out in the team over unless he's someone like. Odegaard, who's 21, and his only 
Odegaard is sort of proven in La Liga because last season was amazing. He's had an okay start so far this season. I just feel like it's going to hinder the growth of like Odegaard okay. and Valverde. Okay, okay, so with regards to Pogba, are you saying that Pogba is finished then? He's, he's done. His, his career is done. He'll no longer nah. be re- relevant. I don't think Pogba is finished. I think Pogba needs to go to Juventus. I think Pogba is Juventus. I think that would be great for Juventus. And like Ronaldo is getting old. So if you have Pogba, Dybala, Ronaldo, and all these other pieces, I feel like Juve can win the Champions League next year if Pogba goes next summer. All right. Um, Abdullahi, Pogba. I think we guys are undergetting Pogba. My, Pogba is my guy. Labil. Labil is my man. No, 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 no. You but he's not been playing well. He's not been playing yeah, well, bro. It's a chill, chill, man. Chill, chill, chill. People are comparing Labio to um, Kevin De Bruyne, this and this. The problem with um, Pogba is, if you look at those United team, McTominay, Fred, Matic, Bruno Fernandes, and Pogba. Pogba, the, Pogba only works in a 4 2 3 when you have someone like Ugolo Kante as a, as a supporting DM for you. The, you, have a, you have no issues in, in defending. All you have to do is attack, attack. In that France World Cup, Kante was there as a, uh, as a supporting DM for, uh, for Pogba. Go, go do your job. I, I know my job as, uh, as, a, as a defensive midfielder. You're, you're, like you're speaking like Pogba was MVP of the World Cup. Pogba was good, but he was the best player on the France Yeah, team. the reason he was good in that World Cup, when you have Golo Kante, for me, when you have Kante in your team, you don't even need to no, work no, 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 he was No, he was more effective. Not that he was great, but he was more effective. Yes. I think that's the right word. Because the reason he was effective because you have someone as, um, as a supporting team for the country. So why won't he be effective? That's why if it goes to Real Madrid, what's he then going to do? You have someone like Casemiro. Modric is getting hold. That is the person who needs to replace. He's getting hold. Wait, 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 wait. So you're saying... Pogba, Tony Cruz, and Casemiro. Absolutely. Yeah, because there's creativity in that Ooh. team. When you have creativity bro. of them, Tony Cruz, bro. you have Labiu, and you have Casemiro. As no, 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 but, 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 but Ahmad, let's be real, let's be real. Are you saying that in 2020, not 2018, yeah. not 2017, yeah. in 2020, yeah. you would still take yeah. Modric over Pogba in that Real Madrid team? I won't for me. I'm, I'm, not, even, I'm not even talking about Modric. I'm talking about Valverde. Have you, have you guys watched this kid, Valverde? He's I, have watched, main... yeah, I have watched him. Yeah, I have. I have, I have. Yeah, so, that's what I'm saying. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, so, yes. so Ahmad, so in, in 2020, 2020, we're taking Modric over Pogba. You're taking uh, Modric and Fede Valverde over Pogba in 2020. I'm taking yes. Valverde over Pogba. Yes. Modric is finished. Modric is finished. Oh, He's I done. Think, that's, no, that's, that's Modric is still playing at a high not, level. He's done. He is Wait, done. Wait, there is it? What? Modric, Modric is not playing at a high level? No, no, no. Modric in the same as he used to be. No, but in 2020, he's better than Pogba. No, no. Did you see Modric against Man City? He looked like uh, an old man. He I looked like an old man. Like, wow. Guys, guys. Bridge in 2020 play. over Pogba. No, if you ever play, wait, 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 wait. What did Okay, sorry. I'd like it. Go for it. I'd like it. Go for it. Go for it. I think the issue with Pogba is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer himself because we need to understand what what formation is um Solskjaer himself playing that fits in Pogba. We keep saying Pogba this, Pogba that, Pogba this, Pogba that. Solskjaer is playing the four two three one formation. Where do you expect him? Where do you expect him? What's called Labiu to play? He can't. He, he can't play them in the two in the two midfield. He has to play in the three midfield. If you want to play him in the two, you have a start. You need to have a static midfield in Matic. And Matic knows how to defend, but does he have the athleticism? No. So when you want to play, you need to play Pogba in the right format, in the right system for him to work. That's why I said he needs to go to a place. I mean, already said it. Maybe someone like Juventus when you have Andreas Pirlo there. So Pirlo has ways of playing Labiu. So, Labiu will drive very well much in Juventus and Real Madrid. Because, because the way Pilo play in um, what's called in Juventus is a free-flowing football. Free-playing pass, pass, pass. That's how Pogba works. Okay, Pogba all right. Pogba doesn't work in the organizational system. It's not going to work. Okay, okay, okay. Over over wait, 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 wait. Let's, let's get it, guys. So, BD call, give it to me. Where do you stand? On, which three? Before I go to you, BD call, let me just hit this. So, from... Magrabatso, thank you. He says, HH, thank you for the super chats. HH, you said the same about f- Fat Hazard. It's very harsh. Don't overrate Pogba. Better players at Madrid or not. He isn't as good as you make him out to, to, to be. Mr. Oh, my my friend. Wait, 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 wait. Let me respond to this guy, man. Let me respond to this guy. I have acknowledged as of right now, Pogba does not look good. If you're telling me that Pogba is not a highly talented player with the ability to do crazy, amazing things, you're hating. And I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But United under Sokshare, that is a crap fest. It's a total crap fest, and he's not playing in the right role. If he's played in the right role with the right players around him, Pogba is an asset 
you cannot deny. So you telling me that if you put Pogba in a well-functioning team that has a strong central midfielder and he's allowed to roam and free, he will not help you to get goals, score goals and produce goals, you're smoking reefer. You are smoking reefer and you're, and you're just hating. Bidiko, Pogba, where, where do you stand? Yeah, so, um, AJ, I want to say that um, there's a better option. There's a better option for Real Madrid. And looking at Real Madrid's transfers for the past couple of transfer windows, they've liked to go very young. Um, they brought back Odegaard, who's very a young um, um, player who has a promising future. Um, they brought um, they brought back someone like. Um, they're trying to bring in these young players such as um, Iturbi and all these guys. They're trying to bring in young players. And Mbappe is one of them. Haaland is one of them. I think I think it's, it will be better if they go for a younger prospect. For me, I think Kamavinga is the guy that they no, should no, no, go no, for. No, but specifically about Pogba, do you believe Pogba is finished? Do I believe he's finished? Um, yes. I, I think if he goes to Juve, he still has maybe like, let's say maybe two or three years um, in him. That's that's how I see it. I don't think he fits in Real Madrid. Um, I think if you want more years and if you want a better deal, this is coming from a Dorman perspective, I think Kamavinga is the best option for Real Madrid if you want more years in, in the team. So oh, oh, yeah. so in your view, where do you stand on, 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 on Pogba then right now? Then do, you, do you still think that he's still useful, can be useful, or he's finished? I, I, I think he's still useful. I think he's still useful, but he has to be played in the right um, team, like the right system. He, he has to be playing around the, around the right surroundings, basically. His surrounding has to be good. His midfield pairing has to be good in order for him to be a really good, um, in order to get the best out of him, basically. You see, that's how okay. I see it. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm sure. Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, 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 easy. Wait, wait. So, I'm sure Kredit says, cause, but let's just first go through everyone first. Says, you've basically admitted Pogba's a system player. Not necessarily. I just said he. Um, if you just only have to do just have a midfielder, he doesn't have to have a right system. Just just have a central mid midfielder. So he has a specific role. That's the key thing. Not a system. He plays a specific role. You can't play a right wing as a central midfielder. You can't play a number ten as a DM. Pogba is a box to box free roaming midfielder. He's not a central midfielder. He's been played at Man United as strictly a central midfielder, which is not his strongest role. Some news. Some news for you to go to. Like, I'm, look at, I'm already seeing Real Madrid already going for N'Golo Conte and Paul Pogba for next summer. You see? See what I'm saying? We well, don't need we'll, Pogba. We'll see. We'll see. Look, we'll see. We'll see. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. We don't let's, need let's Pogba. Let's talk. Let's talk. Wait, I'm Ham. I'm Ham. Pogba, talk to me. Pogba. Um, Pogba for me, like, is he... Is he, a, like, a special player anymore? I think the time for Pogba to... Maybe be a Ballon d'Or player, Ballon d'Or winner is over. I think the last time Pogba was good was under Mourinho, and the last time so, 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 Pogba so made me go wow was when he was at Juventus. So like he I don't think he was that good. I don't think he was that good, to be honest. For me, um, good World Cup players don't make good club players, so or well, don't always make good club players. But yeah. Um, yeah, Pogba, this guy, like, when, when United got this guy, they were buying a Ballon d'Or player. They were replacing Ronaldo, 80 million to fix um, for not replacing uh, Ronaldo. That's why they bought this guy. And um, it went well, but then they came second, and everybody just lost their minds by the fact that they came second. So, um, yeah, the player, I don't think the player has really taken his career seriously enough. So... So, okay, so you're so basically from what I'm hearing from you, I'm is that you're saying that his Pogba is finished, he's done, he'll no longer be world class ever. Um, he may be world class, but I don't think he'll ever be a player where a team has to build around him. I don't think we'll ever see his best in, in, in that case because I feel like 
he's that type of player where if you build around him, that's the only way you can so, get the best out so of him. So basically, you said that his best days are gone. So you've seen his best days are gone, yeah. then there's no point in Juve yeah. or Real Madrid going in for him. Yeah, no point at all. Like, his levels, like, maybe if he's not going to be a squad player, his levels is like um, Arsenal, Lyon, you know, like, yeah, teams around Man United's level. Okay, okay. Um, Cassius, talk to me, Pogba. So, I mean, at, at this moment, in this moment, Pogba doesn't deserve to move up to like a Champions League contender. Yeah. You know, he's playing for, for an average United team and he's not making a difference. With an average team, it, you know, if you're that good, as, as many people say, it would be easier to, but to like, put yourself... Because in, in fairness to your point, because I could get your point, but in fairness, everyone's been trashed and it is very difficult to stand out when the system and the coaching and the managing is all complete brick. Yes, but it, I mean, if he's so, if he's extremely talented and all this, then at least stand out. I mean, he's one of the worst players. I mean, in that Tottenham game, I mean, th- the two goals in the second half, I mean, it looks like he's thinking about, he's, I don't know. I don't know what he was doing. Maybe it's because he had a, a an injury on his arm. I don't know. Mm. Uh, but um, yeah, f- similar to, to Griezmann, I think both of them to regain their relevance, they need to sh- to ball in the Euro next year because that's you know that in the with France, that's where they show they have shown their best performances, and both of them are kind of not in their best moment. So that'll be a big moment, and I think then we can see whether Pogba has become irrelevant or you know just yeah just a past player. So yeah. All right. Well. I test, man, this is the, the topic that you wanted, one that is close to your heart, man. <sighs> Paul, but what's, what's the deal here? Let's try and be as truthful and objective as possible. People have said that it's the team, he's in a crap team, he needs to leave. Others have said, no, nope, it's not about the crap team, you're just not that good. And people have said, no, nope, you're not even good enough to even make an effect on a Real Madrid or even. So where do you stand on this whole um, Pogba thingy? For me, if you look at Everton, when they got James Rodriguez, who did they also get? They got the Corey and they got Allen. So they could get the best out of James Rodriguez. Yeah? They set they made the conditions just right so that they could get the best James Rodriguez possible. We bought Paul Pogba four or five years ago and we still have Yo, I test, we lost you. We lost you, bro. I test, I test, I test. This is not Pogba's position. Paul Pogba is a number eight. He's a Mazala. The Mazala position on the left-hand side of midfield is his best position. Yeah? When we got Paul Pogba, we should have got a CDM. Someone like an Ndidi. Yeah, that will break up play and then someone next to him... I'm sorry. Sorry, I test. Let him land. Let him land. And also someone next to him that, that will control the play, maybe like a Tony Cruz. If we did that and played Pogba in a number eight, yeah, we, we'd get the best Paul Pogba. For me, a lot of people are comparing Paul Pogba to Eden Hazard and saying if he goes to Real Madrid, it's just it's going to end up like Eden Hazard. He's got the talent, but he's not got the attitude. But no, that's not true. Pogba, for me, he has an amazing attitude. He's not like Eden Hazard. Paul Pogba's a victim of, of being... In a wrong system, wrong team. I've I've never had any questions about Paul Pogba's attitude. Every time he comes um, back from from a holiday, he's always fit. He's always the fittest person on the pitch. He's just never been used correctly. Ed, Eden Hazard, he's he, he's the person that has a bad attitude. And he's a, he has an amazing talent, but he just has a bad attitude. I think if Paul Pogba goes to Real Madrid and he used is used correctly with Casemiro next to him and Tony Cruz next to him, bro. He will win Ballon d'Or in his first season. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. Ed, so, 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 that, wait, wait, so, 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 what do you about people? Because a lot of people in the live chats maybe haters are saying that you know, too many excuses, too many excuses for Pogba. People keep saying this and that. So, what is your response when people say, "No, stop thinking about all of these excuses of Pogba"? That he, if he was so talented, if he was so good. He would still be able to make an impact despite being in this bad team and this bad system. So that you say what? Bro, even if, even in this bad team and this bad system, if Paul Pogba was just put in the right position, he would thrive. Even with this bad team, but he's put in a number six with with dead players next to him. 
Like, imagine he, um, it was KDB. We had KDB instead of Paul Pogba. And he was played in a number six. What do you expect? Imagine it was it was Tony Cruz, Modric, any player. You, you could name any player in the world, yeah? We played them, we played them in a number six, even though they're number eights or number tens. What do you expect? Play Paul Pogba in his best position and you'll see the best Paul Pogba and look at his time at United. He's never played in his best position other than when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer first came in when he played alongside Ander Herrera and Matic and look what he did. He was banging in goals and he was giving assists week in, week out. Yeah, And then look what happened. We, we put him straight back to the number six. For me, it's, it's nothing to do with attitude or his ability. It's just He's just been put in an unfortunate situation and he needs to leave United. I'm telling you, at Real Madrid, he will kill it. So, I'm I'm Hammy. You wanted to comment to say something. I'm Ham. I'm Ham. You wanted to say something? It just can All I say right, something? I just can't speak on this. Okay, okay. So, I'm going to go to Abdullahi, then LB. So, Abdullahi. Like what I said to you, I think, um, look at what I, I said. Uh, you play for Cuba, I am in besides Tony Cruz, and also um, Hello? as a member of the team. I'm then Ham. Shush. Well, I'll come to you afterwards, Abdullahi. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, can you carry on, carry on, carry on. Okay, okay. Uh, like what I said, I was saying, I was saying the same thing too. That the player that, that needs to be taken out of the game, I did this to a uh, what's called Luka Modric, because that is where um, Paul Kuga play. So you play Paul Kuga beside for the court and you play Kasemanga as a DM. Then everybody is going to see the real Paul Kuga. We keep stating Paul Kuga, it's not, it's not even playing in the right system at all. It's been playing as a, uh, as a number six as a DM beside, um, beside what's called Sam Matic. You don't play for Kuga, you play for. for Further forward, your job is telling go there and score goals and assist. Let let the other guys do that defensive. Pogba is like Mozilla. like what I it, it, perfect is a very good player. I keep saying it. I rate Labiu high. Okay, very good. okay, very okay. Very okay. player. Okay, all right, all right. okay. Too much. Way too LB, much. LB, LB, LB. Yeah, I think Pogba is far from finished. He just needs to um, find the right system. Go back to to either Juventus or go to uh, Real Madrid and. There's been so much talk now for the last, you know, one, two seasons that he's going to go to Real Madrid or go back to Juventus. But the fact of the matter is he has to do it um, because he is, uh, he is getting obviously heavily criticised for not being able to perform um, at United. And, um, I mean, the thing with Pogba is if he does go back to Juventus, he's just got to sort of be mindful of the fact that the Juventus team has changed so much since uh, 20, what was it, 2016, 2017 when he left. Um, no Piala, obviously, he's coaching now. Um, uh, Vidal's moved on, so there's been some changes to that team. And you know, did he play uh, with Dybala? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he I think one year. Yeah. yeah, they were like close friends. They were like really close good, friends, good friends. Yeah. They were really they good friends. Play with Dybala, um, um, so, Vidal, oh, and oh, okay, okay, okay. So, 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 just round off LB, round off your points. So we yeah. can move. Yeah, so I think he needs to go back to to Juventus um, to sort of give himself another an opportunity to to play at that uh, that level in which we all know Papa can play at. Okay. EG. Okay. EG. Wait, 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 wait. We're moving on. We're moving on. We're moving on. We've got, we've got no, no, no. We've got, we've, we've got more. We've got more. We've got, we've got lots of stuff to talk about. So very briefly, Nata, thank says, why have you spoken about SARS? Just wondering. So very briefly, I did put out like a tweet about SARS and everything. But to answer your question, Nigeria have much more deeper problems and deeper issues than SARS. So, and I'm sure I apply and can and back to me on this is that if you tell him that you're only going to retweet and hashtag SARS, but you won't retweet and hashtag the NEPA, the electricity, the corruption, the poverty, the bad roads, and so forth, then I think we have issues there because there are other okay. bigger issues than SARS in there. Too much stuff is going on in Africa apart from SARS. A lot of things going on. Yeah, as I said, look, it SARS, it's just that it's, it's, it's the cool trending thing to have. But there are other deeper issues that won't From get the, the same hashtag trend. No, 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 no. It is what it is. So, wait, so okay, look, now, a rather biggish story. So, we had this crazy summer of Messi. Was he going to go to Man City? He's not going to go to Man City, blah, blah, blah. Then it ended up not happening. So, there are many moving pieces with this story. So, let me start off by saying, Man City have said that they feel they have the funds... And they have the money in order in order to um, get and to buy Lionel Messi next summer. 
and they said they have the proper package. Let's go. Let's even go even deeper. And I think obviously we'll sort of touch upon this afterwards, but just to connect the stories, the cannibal has been saying some stuff and talking about Barcelona, but he says that if the board changes, Messi will stay. We now know that Bartomeu, they've now been enough signatures that have now been registered, which means that a no, a vote of no confidence is going to take place, so he can be voted out before March. So there's a lot of stuff to really digress and really look through, and and here's my thing. My thing is, I really don't know, but I'll say this to you. I feel there is a, there is more of a chance of Messi staying at Barcelona than him leaving and going to Man City. And I do feel that what he did in the summer was a flex. It definitely was a flex. But let's even go even, even deeper. Let's say, for example, Barcelona comes second or third. They get knocked out in the quarterfinals and they have a trophy-less season and this command thing really doesn't work. Messi's gone. Even if a new board comes through, Messi's gone. And Messi's like, all right, I'm going to join Man City. But if Barcelona win La Liga, they win the league, maybe they get to the quarters of the semis of the, of the CL, and it's a new board, I think Messi stays. But my thing, though, is this is that from a footballing point of view, which is why I was so pissed off that Messi, you took us on this ride and you didn't deliver. From a footballing point of view, I want to see Messi at Man City, in Man City because I want to see as much as I think it's a cheat code for Pep and it's a get-out clause for, for, for Pep because, bro, win without Messi. From a footballing point of view, Messi in the Premier League, Messi with a new team in with Man City, Messi with De Bruyne, Sterling and so forth is an exciting thing to, to see. And also, it can then finish this whole notion that, oh, Messi can, can't play or can't do well as of, of, of Spain, which is always stupid. Of course he can. So, um, Wilson, do you believe next summer Messi will be wearing the sky blue, light blue of Manchester City? Or you think, oh, it's much more talk, talk, talk. He'll end up staying at Barcelona. No, I believe that Messi's not going anywhere. I've, I've, I've said it. Messi was just doing that to mess around with her emotion. Messi's not going anywhere, man. Messi staying at Barcelona. I, I don't know why they bring up that topic again. Messi wants to be in front of the media again for some reason. I don't know why he's doing that. Messi's not going anywhere. Manchester City could have bought Messi way before. Okay, so, so why do you? So why are you so adamant that? So let me say this right now. If Barcelona finish trophyless, they come third. The the team is trash, and it's still the same board. You still think Messi stays? Yes, I think he stayed. Why didn't he leave this season? Exactly. So I, I don't see. No, 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 no. He can legally leave next summer because this sole summer, the, he messed up the, the contract. But next summer, if he doesn't sign a contract extension, oh, boom, there's nothing to even dis- discuss. There's no release clause. Like next summer, his contract runs out. There is nothing to discuss. Because I just don't think he's going to leave. Because Messi likes being comfortable. Messi doesn't like being like outside of his comfort zone. Even even at so, one no, point. No, no, no. So, so, I get that. But you're telling me they come third. They get knocked out in the quarterfinals. The team doesn't play too well. And the team doesn't finish with a trophy. He will still stay. I think so. I think he still say. He still say. Because even, even Lep said he rather has Messi finish his entire career in La Liga. So I just don't see Messi going to Manchester City. It would be cool. I'll be really excited to see Messi in a different league to end this narrative. Oh, he only plays in La Liga. That'd be pretty cool. But I just don't see Messi leaving. I'm sorry. Unless Koeman say, hey, you're not part of my plan anymore, man. It's time for you to leave. I just don't see Messi leaving. I I think he's going to either retire at Barca or retire in Argentina. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sure this is that Man City should have to buy Messi. Defensive liability. No, nope, that's not a good enough reason. Trust me. If Messi's on the cards, Pep Guardiola will create a scenario where they have people that give him defensive cover. <laughs> Trust me. Him being a defensive liability isn't a strong enough thing for him, for City not to buy someone like, like Messi in terms of his skill and his merchandising. Undisputed. Yeah, I would love to see Messi in the Premier League, but I don't think it'll happen for a few reasons. Like... His family settled in Barca. He, he doesn't know any English, I think. So, also, no one's saying this, but Man City is worse than Barcelona. They have a worse team. In, in, 
Like people criticize Barca they for getting three? knocked out. No, no. People criticize Barca for getting knocked out by Bayern and Liverpool last two years. Man City got knocked out by Lyon and Spurs. Their Man City's defense is trash. Their midfield is overrated. Apart from De Bruyne, Rodri, I don't rate him. Gundogan is old. Like Man City is not as good as people think they are, man. Like be- people who think that Man City will automatically win the Champions League if Messi comes, nah. I don't think they will. They're they're not that good. They're not as good as people think. So, um, in your view, you're saying that Messi stays. Yeah. Or I should so. So, 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 you think, so you think that Messi should stay and Messi will stay? He should stay. And if he if he really wants to say Barca have a bad season, right? If he wants to leave, I don't see the point of going to Man City if he's so obsessed with winning another Champions League. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Then if. Where should he then go then? If let's say Barcelona have a horrible season, it's a mess, things don't don't don't, don't, don't work, where where would you then advise him to, to go to then? You know what? PSG. Yeah, PSG, I would say so. Because if um, they have PSG in that final, they'd be Bayern Munich if they have yeah, Messi if, in that, if, in that, if Messi if was in that PSG team, team instead of say Di Maria, they'd be, they'd be Bayern, they'd be Bayern. In that final. They might oh do they? Yeah, dude, it Messi, was a close game, man. Messi's really not finishing. Messi's not missing that goal. That that goal. Di Maria, Maria missed a lot of chances. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, true, 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 true. I mean, Messi, because look, Messi's calling the goal. PSG had their chances, man. They had their chances. Yeah, yeah. You know? Also, Man City, like Pep's recruitment is awful. By the way, just saying, like the oh, yeah, amount of is. trash yeah. that he has bought, bought. I think Man City is think... only going down after it. You know, for the next few years. And I'm think, I, I think I'm a, I hide the news when after the Champions League. Wait, 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 wait. Come to me. Chill, 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 okay. chill, 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 um, chill. LB, talk, talk to me. Um, Messi to City, is it happening? Um, look, I suppose if there was any point in time that Messi was going to leave, it would have been during the summer and you know under the circumstances in which Barcelona um, and crashing out of the Champions League and um, and all that. But I think. Um, you know, it sort of really depends on what happens this season. If, like you said, HH, if the board um, send the current um, person in charge packing and um, and if Barcelona somehow win La Liga, I think that will give Messi more of an incentive to, to stay. Whereas if it's the complete opposite, um, if there's no changes, if Messi doesn't get what he wants and if they don't win uh, any titles and go crashing out of the Champions League like they have in the last three, four seasons. I think um, I think he's out. Um, and in terms of a club that he'll go to, I reckon it will be Man City. Um, you know, the so, connection okay. that he's... So why... Okay, so you think he goes to Man City because of the Pep connection and because he yeah. trusts Pep? Yeah, the connection and the... Uh, the relationship that they've had um, obviously in the past. So I think um, that's going to sort of Give him more of a, more of a, an incentive to, to move to Man City, if anything. All right, um, Ahmad, talk to me. Messi to City, does it happen? No, it's not going to happen because he's looking for Champions League. Sorry, like Man City are just not well equipped to win the Champions League right now in the current state. But and, but and don't you ask, believe that ask. Messi being there? Because again, nah, look. It's not. Well, I think, okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me, okay, let me make the argument. Let me make, make the argument. So, Tottenham. If Messi is there, because also that was also a close game. It was just a flipping Aguero handball kind of thing that caused that goal to be out. So that was literally a chance for them to go through. Sterling he misses that open chance. If Messi is in those two games, you probably believe that he's the difference maker and the finisher that allows them to to go through so it's not like if they've been trashed and so much it has come down to a one little bit of chance here and there so you're saying that Messi not being in City would be the real difference they need in terms of a guy who can get the goals where it is needed to change the course of the game no, I don't think I don't think Messi is the missing piece of Man City in terms of winning the Champions League I think I honestly think their midfield is trash I think their midfield is ass and obviously, the defense has been terrible this whole this season so far. So if that's a problem, then I don't think Messi changes that. Messi just, I think Sterling's miss obviously was a terrible miss. But I feel like, you know, I don't know. I just think their midfield is, is not good enough to win the Champions League, regardless of whether you have Messi or you have anyone in history that's, you know, except 
if you get like a top midfielder to play alongside De Bruyne. I think Rodri is average, and I think Fernandinho is past it. So, so in your view, what happens then next summer? He remains at Barcelona, no, 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 no matter what. Even if they have a trash season, he still stays there. Nah, he's gonna leave. To where? To either Arsenal or Juventus. Whoa, 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 whoa. That that makes no sense, bro. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. Arsenal, come on, man. Okay, Ahmad, I'm begging you, please tell me that you're trolling when you said Arsenal. So you're trolling. Okay. Nah, I think I think PS, I think PSG or Juventus. To be honest. I think I think I think yeah, because I think at one point that uh, that new guy, what's his name, is it Fabrizio or something like that? He reported that Juve were in the race for him as well. And I think uh, looking at Juve's expiring contracts the, this season and the ones they've gotten rid of so far, uh, like Higuain's and Kairos is going and a bunch of other contracts. So I think theoretically, I think you can get Messi next. Like Juventus can, but I think PSG are the most likely and Juventus second. Okay. Okay. Um. I'm your critic. Talk to me. Does Messi go to Man City? Can you hear me? That's it. Yeah, can hear you. Can hear you. Uh, so what, what, the, what the question is? Do I think Messi will go to Manchester City? Uh, see, so we, so we say, yeah. So do you think that deal happens next summer? See, I don't think it happens. I don't think it happens for a number of reasons. I, I, this is not the same Messi that we saw in the 18-19 season, where where he was unquestionably the best player in the world, where he could have been the difference maker for City. This is. Uh, his goal scoring has declined. He doesn't press uh, that much. He doesn't track back and help the team defensively. So he cannot play on the right wing because he tends to drift in. He cannot play false nine either because he has a habit of uh, dropping deep and creating for uh, the attackers. So I think his role will overlap with Kevin De Bruyne, and I don't think neither of them will be either of them will be able to uh, flourish. So, I think it'll just imbalance their team. It makes no sense for them to go for Messi. Their uh, problems are defensive. And a player who, who, is a, who has the poorest work rate in Europe will only add to those problems. So, unless you want to look at it from a marketing perspective, uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. You should stay at Barcelona, focus on La Liga, and uh, maybe try to win a Champions League in the next few seasons. Okay, okay. Um, so, okay, so, but... If I always use this thing, so if let's say this is a horrible season for Barcelona, like totally horrible, do you mm-hmm. still see him staying if it's yet another bad season, no trophies? I I think he will try to leave, but uh, do, do you honestly think he should go to City at church? Do you think it, he, he will uh, improve City? My belief is obvious. You you put him. You, no, wait, 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 wait. Let, 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 let me answer. Let me answer. I get all of the things you said in terms of his lack of pressing and so much, and he's not really the highest end goal scorer. He is still an extremely highly skilled player. And he goes to City, he is easily the best player in that team. And I just feel that City dominates a lot of games. They control a lot of the games. But Sterling, Jesus, De Bruyne, Thingy can't do the things that Messi can do in 2020 and in 2020 2021 so when you know that a guy has the ability to do the things that he can do and he now he's now helped with a better functioning system because barcelona Kuman is still figuring out griezmann is playing out what we don't know where he is and is only 17 years years old so they're still figuring out city is still a very well defined system but they're obviously missing some magic and some technical quality uh, in that attack, which is what Messi brings. So, uh, so no, 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 I have a question. I have a question. So, where do you think he will play if he goes there? You, you, oh, you, you, you put him on the right, and Pep will figure out any kind of defensive liabilities that he may have. He will then force one of those midfielders to know that you have to now work twice as hard to um, um, cater for his defensive liabilities. Because my thing is, a guy that's good, you figure out how you can make do with any deficiencies you have. It's the same thing with Marcelo. Zidane knew that this guy defensively is a liability. He's so good and so important for us in attack. Bro, Casemiro, whoever, Ramos, walk double trouble to make sure that that, that left-hand side is catered for because we are going to walk with his liabilities. You cannot not get messy because of his defensive liability. That is insane. Nah, that's insane. That's well, insane. I don't think Pep will stay for the next season either, so it's it's really tricky. I, then that's that's yeah. another thing. Does it does Pep stay? Okay. Um, I am Ham. 
Um, look, I want to first uh, talk about th- the three teams which I think Messi um, should make the, the move to. Um, okay. That would be amazing. Um, first um, is Real Madrid. If Messi went to Real Madrid, that would be amazing. We don't need him, bro. What? We don't need him. We don't need him. I'm Messi sorry. is never going him. to Real Madrid. So don't say <laughs> that. He's never going to Real Madrid. Yeah. Um, second is AC Milan. That's and okay. third, that's never Fed. happening. Third, if you were those three teams, then I would be impressed. What's the third team? What's the third team? Juve, Juventus. If you went to those three teams, I'd be so, impressed. So, 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 but... Why would you be impressed if he went to Juventus? Because it would clearly show that he, he respects um, <laughs> as a player. What? <laughs> because of that, you go into look, 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 my friend. Tell me, is no, Messi no, going to Man City next summer? My friend, my friend, my friend, my friend. I'm ham. Listen, listen. My friend, my friend, is Messi going to Man City next summer? Yes or no? Okay, look, the Man City move. I think it also makes sense for Messi because um, Man City at the moment is pretty run by. Um, Pep and his friends. <laughs> so, if if Pep and his friends, after failing to get a Champions League, bring Messi in, I think that's progression for for Man City. Everything is is as, as um, everything is a go as it was. So, everything's good if they get Messi in because if they get Messi, even if they don't win the league, even if they don't get Europe after that, Messi can still bring in other people. They still he still gives their club like a lot of stock that they wouldn't have had without Pep because I think everyone can see that um, Pep is, is ready to go. Or even if he's not ready to go, I think people want him out of the club. So I think sooner or later he's going to have to go. And I think um, if he brought Messi into the club for Man City, he would really be a legend for the club. So, yeah, I think it works for Messi because he gets to get paid a lot of money. I don't think anyone else is going to pay that uh, Hundred mil he's getting at Barca. PSG. Right. Um, Abdullahi man, Messi to Man City. Hey uh, kids. Firstly, uh, I, I need to break down Lionel Messi. I, I need to break down Man City. <sighs> Firstly, I think um, the debacle we saw with Lionel Messi leaving Barcelona and wants to leave once again. We understand last season was not good. It wasn't a good season for Lionel Messi to, to play because of what happened in the UCL and also losing the Champions League, uh, losing the La Liga to Real Madrid. So this is this is the issue with Lionel Messi now. He has to decide what he wants himself. Do I stay in Barcelona or do I move? What is his ambition? Do you want to? Okay, if you want to win the Champions League, is this um, team equipped enough to win the UCL? That is the first question for Lionel Messi. Second is, if I move to Man City, will I win it? I doubt it. I don't think it's gonna happen because that Man City team. I'm saying, why, 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 why won't it happen? Why won't it happen? H H H. You want me to? You want me to start keep driving now? No, oh, no, 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 no. I don't. I don't. I don't want another pepper pep rant. But... No, 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 no. I, I, that, no. That's what I don't want. To, that's why I don't want to bring it in business. Thank you. That's thank I'm being, you. I'm being lenient because it, it needs to know his ambition first. Do you want to win Champions League in Barcelona? Yes or no? If he wants to win it, then what team does it fit in for me to win that Champions League? If it doesn't fit in. Do I go to Man City to win it? That Man City team is not kept enough to win Champions League because if you look at the guy in Sterling, those players are not, they lack mentality. And you have a coach in Pep Guardiola who doesn't even know how to win Champions League. He has won it for many years now. For like People say he's one of the best managers in the world. For me, he hasn't even shown on a high level, a technical high level, to become one of the best managers in the world. No, 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 no. no. For me, you cannot, you cannot use four or five seasons in, the, in one second team. I can't even reach Champions League semi-final. No, no, that's not an excuse for me being the best in the world. No, not an excuse. Bringing Messi in is spoiling his reputation as a player. Because what if they go to the Champions League and they lose, if they get out of the Champions League, land of the season, they go to the final. So, what, so, what, so what should, if this is an unsuccessful season for Barcelona, mm-hmm. what should Messi do? Do you then believe that Messi still stays at Barcelona if it's an unsuccessful season? It's a trophy-less season. H I think if they change the board, that, that may convince Messi a little bit. But that, like I said for the from the first start, his ambition himself as a player. The only thing I believe Messi could go is PSG because he has Neymar. He's a very good friend with Neymar. So that will come if Kylian Mbappe leave PSG, that will convince Neymar to stay. Like yeah, I have Lionel Messi with me. So I can really stay in this team and stand maybe like two more or three more years content and stay. 
because we all know Messi and uh, Messi and them Neymar are very good friends. So they understand their communication is very good. So that that will help him win the Champions League. He wants to win again in PSG, in that uh, rather than go to Champions, uh, than go, rather than going to Man City. So because that that PSG team just need a very good coach that can uh, coach them. To I don't think Thomas Tuchel is the right coach for them, but they need a good coach, someone like Jose. Someone like Massimino Allegri. So, say yes, you know. But okay, so what happens? So that's next summer. What happens with Messi then? What happens? Next summer, he's living free. He's not renewing his contract. He's living for free. So PSG and and and, and and where does he go? If he leaves for free, where does he go? For me, I believe he should go to PSG because that's the best chance for him to win the Champions League rather than Man City. Rather than so Man you're saying okay, so you're saying that we're gonna have a Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe front three. Yep, we're ready to have it. Neymar. Kylian Mbappe and Lionel Messi. That's a that's a that's a crazy front three. I yeah. won't lie. That's a crazy front three. Yeah. Okay. 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 And BD call. Messi next summer. What happens, bro? Um, before I answer the question, can I um discuss about City being the weaker squad to Barcelona? No. Okay. Okay, so um I believe that Messi um is playing hide and go seek. That is what Messi is playing. He's playing the game. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say and... it's it's hide and seek? Did you say hide yeah. and go seek? Yeah, hide and go seek. Yeah, it's it's called it's it's just hide and seek, just hide and seek. Hide Karen, and seek. Karen, Karen, yeah, Karen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Karen. He's playing the he's playing the game called hide and seek. Um, and it's ridiculous. I am just tired of listening to this guy. His his new name is called Laesi. Um, I just cannot cannot take him seriously anymore um it's not that it, the, the thing about Lias is it's not that he's he's um he's hurt me or anything like that it's just that there's some there's certain things right the dude said he wants to leave he made an official public statement on twitter that saying that he wants to leave he makes the official statement, public statement that he wants to leave on um, Twitter, right? And then a, a few months later, he goes he goes back on his word. He goes back on his word, and what he says is, um, "I'm not trying to force the club." He doesn't have balls. That's the problem with Messi. He, I mean, sorry, Laiasi. He just does not have balls, and because he doesn't have balls, he will never, ever, ever, ever move to another club. He he's he's such a baby like that. I'm sorry to say this, but I'm he's a sword in his back. He he's such he's such a baby. He, he doesn't have balls. He, I can't take him seriously. I mean, Laesi is his name, man. This guy is so oh, oh, okay. Okay, but if Barca have a garbage season, I know you say it's Laes is this whole kind of thing. You still say that he still stays. So because he's he said in that interview. Because you would be right if Barcelona have a crap season and he still stays. That he says, oh, because his whole thing was that this team can't compete. I want to mm -hmm. win a Champions League and they're not, mm -hmm. um, and I and I still want to win titles. And these teams are not committed to win titles. So you're then saying that he, that whole thing was a lie. That even if it shows that they're not competitive and they're crap, um, he will still stay at Barcelona. Um, HH, do you know the vote of no confidence from Bartomeu is uh, false? All of it is false, basically. The police just um, got fake. It was fake votes that they said <laughs> that was going to take the president off. So that's, that's, what I, that's, what, that's what I heard. That was the report I heard that was fake votes. But um, what I want to say is um, that is a very tricky question, HH. What I will say, though, is I think Messi, right? That Man City team is, for me, probably, I would say, top three best squads in world football right now. De Bruyne literally is one of the I mean, he so, is the so, best. Okay, so, so, so if Messi was to go to Man City, does he improve them and does he get them closer to winning the, the Champions League? Um, <sighs> HH, you know something? I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised because he fits Pep's system. He fits the way City wants to play. Not only does he fit the way City wants to play, but like, bro, like City have like number one in every position, Kyle Walker. 
Um, you talk about Ederson. You talk about De Bruyne, best mm-hmm. midfielder in the Premier League last season. Um, uh, you talk about um, a girl who possibly is still one of the best strikers in the world right now. You know, like they can win. The cha- I don't even think they can only win one Champions League. HH. I think they can win two Champions Leagues if Messi comes. Okay. Because Messi's not gonna he help the defense. His- okay. Okay. No. No. Wait. Wait. Fine. Okay. Look. Um. Let's run it. So, so Cassius, who is a Barca man, a, a resident Barca DJ. Mans, so do you see again? This is specific because I think this is a better way to frame it. So, if your club, no trophies, not a great season. Because I do believe that you can offer Messi a contract offer in January, so you can off, so he can accept a contract offer in January, and then he can then obviously leave in the summer. So, do you see that happening? Him going to Man City? Um, I don't think it's the most likely uh, situation. I think. Yeah, you're right. Messi can can seal his future in 83 days, January January 1st. That's 83 days away. I don't think he, he will sign a contract as soon as possible to leave. I think he'll wait and see what happens. The I don't know what BD Core I don't maybe has brick sources, but the vote of no confidence is is true. It is happening. The referendum will be held in two weeks. Um, the end of October, wait, they'll wait, see. Wait, so 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 wait, so 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 BD Core, you were, you were basically lying. Or you had some crap sources then, pretty much. Okay. Cassius, yeah. we'll continue. So, um, yeah, that the there will be a new board um, at by at the latest by March, at the earliest, you know, January, February. So I he did the same thing last summer. He had the option June tenth to leave. He could have left before then, but his his reasoning was that, you know, the season is still on and he didn't wanna you know, make a, a big, a big splash. So he waited until the end of the season. So I think he'll do the same thing. He'll wait until the end of the season to make a decision, but I don't think Man City is, is is the most likely destination. I would say PSG is more likely because I mean, Man City Pep Pep's future isn't certain at all. You know, he is, his contract ends next year. And I don't know if Man City would, would sign him to a new contract if if he has another unsuccessful season. So if Messi were to leave, I think he would go to PSG ahead of Man City. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um. So let me just hit that stream marker. Um. Guys. So guys, send. We'll answer a few questions. Send in some questions, guys. Send questions in. Send questions in in the live chat. We will try and we'll take maybe take about three four five questions before we get out of here so guys in the live chats like the vid hit the like button if you hit subscribe like the vid subscribe and also um send in questions for your boys send in questions for the panel and i will pick out the best questions that you guys sent in the live chats so this is just an open-ended thing um clarence clarence sadoff he has just come out and said that he feels that um hazard doesn't have the right mentality um, to play for Real Madrid. And he questions the mentality that he has for Real Madrid. <sighs> Guys, do, are we saying that Zad is finished? That Zad... As yes. You know, can, yes. I, can I talk it I want him out. I want him out of my club. I don't want him. Yes, he's finished. He's garbage. Chill, 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 chill. And I agree. Um, okay, Abdullahi, go for it. Uh, I think I'm not, I also listened to the um, to the interview too. But this is what we uh, we, we, we uh, as a fans. This is what we're missing. We need to calm down with Eden Hazard. I've watched Eden Hazard in Chelsea for like seven seven to eight years in Chelsea. He has been very consistent. He's not a trust player, but I for, I keep saying it to them at this fans. Muntaha, Red, and and the guys. I said it. Madrid team need. To give the ball to Eden Hazard, not Benzema, not Sergio Ramos. Give the ball to Hazard. Let him do his stuff. Hazard is not a left wing; he's a number ten. He plays more as a number ten rather than playing as a left wing. Give him the ball, let him do his job. It's gonna, it's gonna drive more. You are saying he's brick. Hazard is not a brick. 
Abdullahi, 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 you know that I am one of the biggest Hazard fans there are. I know. There's, there's, I keep saying but, but, it. I, I, I Hazard, let me, let me land, let me land, let me land, let me land, let me land. So, you know, I've always been defending him. They have been giving him the ball. They have played him at number 10. He has been given the ball and mm-hmm. he's simply not been doing anything positive mm-hmm. with the ball. There is, this is nothing to do with his system, nothing to do with the formation. Because if we, with Pogba, we can use that. No, 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 no. Hazard has been played in his, in his right formation. Okay. He has, he's been played at wide left. Okay. That is the impression that, that, that he knows. And he's been given the ball. They've passed him the ball and it's just not what works out. So, okay. Okay. If, if you want to read that scenario, I'm going to read that same, same scenario as you for when he was in Lille. In Lille, he was the arguably the best player in that team because he was young. He left Lille, he came to Chelsea, he was still the best player. That same Chelsea, he went there, he still played for Belgium and he's still the best player in Belgium. I don't know, he has no mentality problem. For me, he has no mentality problem. The problem is Real Madrid himself. Where exactly do they, do they fit him as that himself? You are playing the what's called um, Asensio, you play Benzema, you play this. Has that for me needs to be given the ball more? It, for me, that team I look last season. They don't give him that much ball. You saying he's playing this, he's playing that. Yeah, we don't give him the ball. Abdullah, do you watch La Liga, bro? They're, they're the giving him the ball. Oh him my him. god, Abdullah, enough. Hazard. I've never wanted this guy at Real Madrid. Hazard is a fantastic ability player, but uh, I don't, I don't know why we got him. Zidane was the one that wanted Hazard because he also yeah. this guy's my mm-hmm. favorite player. He's my favorite player. He's this and that. But my thing with Real Madrid, we didn't need a player like Hazard. What we needed was a goal scorer to reproduce the goal that Cristiano was producing. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we got Hazard making it seem like, oh, Hazard's going to score goals, do all that. But it's been a failure. You got you go into the arguably the greatest club of all time and you decide to get fat over the summer. <laughs> that's disrespectful, man. Like that's, that, that mm-hmm. pisses me off so much. See, yes. if Hazard was, see, if Hazard so, was fit and he got hurt, I can understand. But you got overweight. Well, okay, like, so Vilton, 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 but Vilton. So you're telling me that the player that you saw do what he did for Chelsea that season, you still didn't want that player. No, I didn't want. I've never wanted him at Hazard. Hazard is a type of player. If Cristiano Ronaldo is still there, I would want Hazard at Real Madrid. But since he's there and he got the number seven, you weren't the greatest number at the club. Like we're expecting so much out of you, and he's not the dude to do that. That's why I want Mbappe at Real Madrid. Hazard is a fantastic ability player. But right now, my dude, you eating at McDonald's. Like, it's, it's embarrassing. Like, you are a meme. Like, we won La Liga without you. Like, come on, man. And you were the signing of the summer. Like, you haven't done nothing. You came back against give Manchester him, City. You play like chance, garbage. Man. Give him a chance. Give him a chance. I'm sorry. Give like, give him a it's just bad. Like, Gary Bill, Gary Bill, Andrew Pony is doing more than Hazard. Like, it's just sad. <laughs> Like it's sad. All right. Okay. Okay. Any anyone who wants wants to jump in before we get into questions on this topic? What is the question, Ed? Ed? So, so basically, it's has. I think um, on disputed, you want to talk. Basically, it's Hazard. Um, what is is this guy? Is this now officially a failure? The move to Real Madrid because Sidov says that he questions this guy's mentality. So is it a case of where this was a, a botched move? Um, undisputed, I think. I saw your mic off. Uh, do you want me to respond? Yeah, so I think it's a, I think, undisputed or me? I'm, I'm sure, go for it. I'm sure. No, so I think if, uh, I think this season is his last shot. If he manages to regain his fitness, comes back, if he comes back in a couple of weeks or so and uh, starts producing, then it's okay. But uh, I think if he doesn't uh, get himself fit this season and uh, excels, then it's over because he's nearly 30, 31, I think. He isn't a Cristiano Ronaldo. 20, 20, 29, 29, 29. What? He's 29. 29, 29. yeah. So, but, but still, he's not that yeah, fit. No? He turns he's not a Cristiano. Like Mars. Exactly. So, he's not a Cristiano Ronaldo. He's not a Robert Lewandowski. That's he's the not other the reason why they want to get him, too. Yeah, that's the other why? reason why they want to get him. Because he oh, turns 30 old. next year. He turns 30 next year. He should have come to Madrid around good. 26 or 27 this he came around to, on his late, like, 20s. Like, and look okay, at him now. Okay, okay, he's okay. overweight. He can't do nothing. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, wait. I'm sure. I'm sure, Randolph. I'm yeah, sure Randolph. I, I, do, I do agree with Wilton. It was an ill-advised signing. You needed somebody to replace the goals that uh, Cristiano brought you. And Hazard was just a creative player. He uh, And the only reason he why he had those many goal contributions for Chelsea is because they catered to his strengths. They played through him like they do with uh, and, Messi and at Barcelona. God bless, God bless you. Exactly, exactly. my point. Green Madrid doesn't no, give but, but you can't, but you can't have that at Real Madrid. They have elite world-class players 
you can't really play for a guy who hasn't really proven himself. Messi has been there for 10 or 15 years. You can't just waltz into a team like Real Madrid and explain Tony Cruz. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You, 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 yeah, you have to. You have to show your exactly. own. So, sure. He cannot but, confine himself to a role and be world class. So, yeah. Okay, so let's take some questions. Let's take some questions, yeah. man. Um, wait, 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 wait. Can oh, I speak? God. I'm not even going to give it to you, man. Talk, 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 Um, talk. Look, Hazard, the thing is, okay, this guy is a luxury player, let's be honest. He has to be taken care of. For Chelsea, for Chelsea, Chelsea, he wasn't. He was the only player who was doing anything in that club. But the moment he moves to the big boy club and he has to catch up with other players who are at a much higher level than him, uh, I think he just had a nervous breakdown. I think he just he can't handle waxed. the pressure. Nervous breakdown. He I think he can't over, handle he, the he pressure. He turned up overweight before he played. So, so this dance have nothing with... He was overweight before but he played any games. We, so. we, all, we, we all know his ability though. Yes. And what you've seen for Madrid is... It's... it's I don't even know to put the words. It's Jovino form. It's like... Nah, he's he's not good at all. He's so, he's terrible. So you're saying, that, so you're saying that this was a fail. That, that this this move is a failure. That, that he won't produce anything this season. Is that what you're trying to tell me? I think if this guy is ever to be anything to Real Madrid, he maybe first needs to get like a loan to Malaga or something. Okay, I think he's injured right we're now done. too. All right, we're done. Okay, Just let's answer some it questions. It let's get some questions. Let's get some questions. Questions, questions, questions. So Malaga. this is a nice one. So. Um, from Jan Van, who says, "What is the best stadium in the world? Best stadium in the world." So, so based on what? Can, can I answer? Wait, based wait, on what? Wait, wait, let me. So, let me. So, we'll grab this best stadium in the world, and I will say that. Let us use two bits of criteria. First criteria is um, the look, architecture. Second one is atmosphere. So in terms of architecture, design, and the, a visual design, and in terms of atmosphere. So for me, um, in terms of architecture and just the design, um, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, which I've seen up real, is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. And obviously because it's like the first true modern stadium. So there isn't a stadium that is as well designed as that. It is one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. So that is the best. In terms of atmosphere, I'm still going to say this because maybe I'm old school and everything. San Siro. San Siro. There has never been an, a such a feeling like if you're back in the Coliseum and such a unique atmosphere where you're like you're in, like it feels like you're in a cauldron than the San Siro. So for me, so architectural look, design, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, atmosphere, the San Siro. Does it have to be like? Does it have to be a football stadium? Can it be other sports too? Because football, no, no. Let's keep it football. Let's keep it football okay, stadium. Football, football stadium. Okay. Okay. Um, so, I would say some... Wait, wait. Let's Vilton. We'll, 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 we'll go in turn. Vilton. Okay. For me, obviously, I'm gonna be biased. It's obviously we all know what's the best stadium in the world. It's the Santiago Bernabeu, man. Nothing has come close to that stadium, man. It's iconic. It's amazing. It's magical. Everybody wants to play in the Santiago Bernabeu. But instead of, but for atmosphere, I would say the Borussia Dortmund stadium because that stadium on a Champions League night, yeah. oh my goodness, Mike, bro. Not that Mike, stadium not is insane, man. Even Cristiano I, I was Ronaldo himself, the same. even Cristiano Ronaldo himself say he that's the worst place to play in a second leg game, like in that wait, stadium. So, so, like, wait, you, wait, you mean Signal Iduna Park? Nah, yeah, yeah the Borussia Dortmund stadium. Yeah, the yeah. Borussia Dortmund stadium. Yeah, that stadium is insane, man. Cristiano okay, said okay, he struggled okay, so, so much playing in that stadium. Okay, so you say that for design, Bernabeu, for atmosphere, Signal Iduna Park. Yeah. Okay, all right. Undisputed. 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 We can't hear you. All right. Uh, LB. Um, I'd say for design, it would probably be... Uh, a toss-up between the Allianz Arena um, in Munich and the uh, the Maracanã in uh, in Brazil in Rio. Mm, but but if you had to choose one, if you had to choose one, I'd say the fact that um, the uh, 
uh, the Allianz Arena is in Europe and obviously home to one of the biggest clubs in Europe, I'll probably say, but Allianz, but um, definitely Mark and I second for me. Um, in terms of atmosphere, I would, I'd probably say um, Vicente Calderon, but obviously that doesn't exist anymore. Um, probably say Dortmund, um, Signal Laguna Park. Okay, okay. I've got to head um, off HH, but um, thanks for having us. I'll see you next week. Nice one. See you next one. And I also think as well, I think they said that Signal Iduna Park has the best average, the highest average attendance of yep. any stadium in, in Europe. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. Which yeah. is crazy. So, um, Ahmad, talk to me. Design and atmosphere. Well, um, I think the Emirates has the best design. It's nice. I mean, I went to the Emirates. Atmosphere is a bit thingy. That is a very nice stadium. It is a very nice stadium. You went, you went there. What did you play there? Hmm? Did you play there? No, 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 no. Um, my friend is a season ticket holder, and he he was going away, and then he just allowed me to borrow his thingy, and I watched. It was like a um, a European qualification game. The I went on everything. So, yeah, I, I went to just watch. And it's like, just in terms of how it looks built, oh, no, it's 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 very nice, very nice. Yeah, and uh, in terms of atmosphere, I think, like, see, like for someone that has played soccer, that has, <laughs> that has played soccer, um, it's, it's, it's football. It's football. It's, not, it's, football. it's, not, it's, not it's soccer. Football. I don't know what soccer is. It's football. It's football. It's football. It's football. It's football. <laughs> if you don't Ahmad, if you say the name soccer again i'll i'll throw you out of this hangout so <laughs> what, what the, what you mean? all right um so i think like someone that plays for someone that plays football i think the dormant stadium like i'd love to play in that stadium so okay. the atmosphere for the, yeah yeah all right um cassius um, so for I would say for atmosphere, I think that you know, like everyone said, Signal Aduna Park, San Siro, and uh, you know, pretty for, nice too. The yeah, I was I was nice. also gonna say I was gonna say that at the end. I but, mean, it's subjective also. And the the thing about Cam No is that it has um, you know, someone got the echo on. But yeah, Camp No, it, it's it's the most unique stadium I think because most of the stadiums are. You know, they have like a bowl on top. Camp mm. No, you see everything. Mm. And uh, yeah, I think it's it's a unique stadium. But I could definitely understand, like you said, HH San Siro. I think just the way, you know, whenever the goals come in, uh, you the see sound. the whole crowd stream in from the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind and, of they, funny, and they but, go to that kind of like balcony yeah, area. Yeah, exactly. So I could definitely understand San Siro. And just one thing, the architecture on the... the um, what stadium? The Bayern Stadium, the Allianz Arena. I think I like that one a lot. I think it's it looks really nice. nice. I think when you look at it at night, exactly at and night, it then lights up. Yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. But my thing though is, go on, just go to Google and just look at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. That stadium is insane. It's it's like it's like a spaceship. <laughs> yeah, the thing is like a spaceship. It is insane how 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 the whole thing is built because. They have NFL games in there as as as, as well. Um, I'm sure critic. Uh, well, I agree with you too. And uh, the Allianz Arena, especially at night, it looks absolutely spectacular. Mm. Uh, the Wembley Stadium is nice. The recent uh, Tottenham Stadium is uh, amazing. Uh, but uh, in terms of atmosphere, I think San Siro, yeah. But AC Milan have, hasn't really been relevant for a while now, so. In recent memory, I'd say Campano because it's almost impossible for any team to beat us there. Mm. And uh, I would have said Campano undisputed, but then we had the second leg at Anfield. So Anfield. Okay. I am Ham. 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 All right. What's it called? Uh, Abdullahi, give me the stadiums for <clears throat> atmosphere and for design. I think for for design, I've seen the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. You said like that stadium look, it, it look beautiful. My lord, mm -hmm. I love that stadium. My god, amazing. Ah, I wish I wish woman could just pump money. <laughs> jo please, woman, I'm begging you in the name of God. Please, they better they better <laughs> win the Champions League with having ah, a stadium woman, like that. Woman, please pump money in that stadium. I want to change time for good man. Ah, that stadium looks so beautiful. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Try. Try. 
I, th- I think have you... someone wants to say something. Uh, go ahead. No, no, I'll say it after. I'm talking about. Okay. Have you guys? I know you guys don't watch American football, the NFL, but have you guys seen the Ram Stadium? No, that I have, stadium's no, no, no. insane, man. No, but I have heard that some of the NFL stadiums are pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. They said some of the NFL stadiums are, are, are pretty, which is why like Tottenham Stadium is used for NFL because I think. Mm-hmm. For NFL teams, because there are so many players, it needs to yeah. be much bigger. Much and bigger, the change yes. rooms need to be a lot more larger, so they're a lot more gargantuan in the NFL stadiums. It exactly. just shows you the sheer size of the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium because NFL teams and people play there as well. Um, what's it called? Uh, I haven't finished. Um, I'd like to go for it. I think okay, the atmosphere, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the middle between Anfield and Signal Duma Park. Because HH, if you go to Anfield, you never walk alone. My Lord in heaven. The, the way they shout, the atmosphere in that never work alone. It's gonna be difficult for you to play in that stadium. Very, I've never seen a, a team winning that. The only thing I think that, that I found in that stadium is in, I think Chelsea. Apart mm. from that, I don't think so. Because that stadium with Signal Duma Park is one of the most difficult for them to go. That stadium, those those songs they sing, you will never work alone. That stadium uh, is an hell for any team that wants to go. There. Any team, both in Europe, both in EPL, both in Europe, is an hell for team to go there. So for me, I think I'm gonna go slightly with uh, with Anfield. That stadium is hell for any team that wants to go. Any team. Okay. Okay. I'll go, I'll, um, I'll go to Anfield, man. I'm I'm ham. I'm ham. Give give it to us for design and then for atmosphere. Um, for design, I'm gonna go with Soccer City. Uh, shout out South Africa. <laughs> um, and for for atmosphere, of course, I'm gonna go with Anfield. Okay. Okay. Hey, fair. don't that's forget fair. about the Galatasaray Stadium. Their atmosphere is pretty insane too. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. It's but crazy. Amphid is, is more. Galatasaray. Also, also, also someone said it in the live chat. Bombonera, Boca Juniors Stadium. Yeah. The atmosphere is insane. Like literally, it's like the like whole stadium just shakes like crazy. Because my uncle, he went to River Plate against Boca Juniors, and he said that literally, just even when you're Entering the stadium, it is the craziest thing you'll ever see. And once you just go in there and everything, like especially when it's River Plate against Boca Juniors, it is madness. So the Bombonera is mad. Um, undisputed. Well, um, guys, can you actually hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear you? Yeah. Um, for aesthetics, definitely San Siero. It just looks like a coliseum, honestly. Mm. It looks incredible. As for atmosphere, I think Dortmund Stadium is usually really... It's electric on Champions League nights. Also, Le- uh, I would say uh, Boca Juniors Stadium as well, even though like maybe it's not as infamous, but that one for sure too, especially against River Plate. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, let's put that on. So let's go for this. I, I didn't even, I didn't even say mine, yo. <laughs> okay, B. Oh, sorry, BD call, BD call. What, what's yours? Yeah. What's yours? Um, I'm gonna say atmosphere has it has to be Dortmund, yo. Like that, like our stadium, yo, in Champions League nights. Like I said, it's just amazing. No, even Champions League nights, but in home matches. Like if you watch the first game we played this season, like we had like a lot of fans in the stadium, and even the atmosphere there was really good. So I'd say Dortmund. Um, design. Um, I would go with. Uh, I like Johannesburg, uh, South Africa. Johannesburg. Oh, stadium. you mean you mean the one that was in in the World Cup? In the World, World Cup, Cup. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good, yeah, that was yeah. a very a very good like stadium. Yeah, that that's stadium. soccer city. It's soccer city. That's soccer city. Soccer city. It's good. I am yes, that's yes, that's very good. That's a very good stadium. South Africa. See, and my annoying thing is that those guys. I I hope, I hope that rugby aren't taking over that stadium, man. Because my beef was that. That stadium should still be kept exclusively for for football. They shouldn't just let mm-hmm. rugby and just take over that, that, no, that, that, that stadium. You've got two teams. It was, that, it was uh, an excellent. It was. Oh, sorry. Hello. Um, you've got you've got two teams in Johannesburg called uh, Chiefs and Pirates. I oh, think oh, yeah, they Chiefs, use Kaiser Chiefs. Okay. Oh, no, Orlando Pirates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ghana and USA was playing in that stadium. Um, I thought it was a really nice atmosphere, to be honest. Not only atmosphere, but design too is pretty cool. So I like it. And um, that's what I would say personally. Um, that's how I see it. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Let's uh, 
roll with this one right well, it, it, now. With all of Maracana, don't you get Maracana that much high? The thing about Maracana is this is that it's just the sheer size. Because I think they say that it's either that or the Azteca Stadium that has the largest attendance. So Maracana is is just huge, massive. It's not the most amazing design. And the atmosphere just isn't as good as the San Siro or Signal Iduna Park or Bombonera. It's just that it's the big one of the biggest stadiums in the world. It's either that or the Azteca that are the biggest stadiums in the world. All right. So where do you think Van Dyke will rank in terms of all-time defenders when he retires? Um, for me, hard to say. But let's say he was he would retire now. He wouldn't. Be, he wouldn't even be mentioned. Like he wouldn't even be in, in he wouldn't be top ten. He wouldn't be top fifteen. He might not even be top twenty. And that's just being true. Like I can easily name you ten or fifteen better defenders than Van Dyke. And I think that people can be prisoner of the moment. Now, if he maintains and continues to do so here's the, the the key thing. Let's see what he now does for Holland and what he does for the for the Netherlands and and so forth. So, because if he now does, so, if he now does something well for ne- for the Netherlands and the Holland and so forth, then we can now ride through. But for me, I'm like, do you know how many great defenders have been with you? Look, Barresi, Canavaro, Desai, Turam, the De Boer twins. There have been too many amazing de- defenders. Um, Vilton, Van Dijk, where do you think that he'll rank when all is said and done? Like, if he retires now, like you say, he's definitely not, not top ten. I can I can name top ten defenders right now out of my head that are better than him. But it all gonna depend what he does at the Euro. If he can win it, if he can like like Canavero, what Canavero did, like he led, he didn't lead that. Like he was the he was the like the backbone to that Italy team to help them win the World Cup in '06. Like if he could just like have a performance like that. Yeah, but if he retires right now, he's not top ten. We're just gonna be like, oh, Van Dijk was just a good defender for Liverpool. He's definitely. He, I don't know how anything about Liverpool. I am. Don't get mad if I say this. Is he top ten greatest defender of all time for Liverpool? <sighs> he, he might be. He might be. Because I, I don't know anything about Liverpool players, okay. but yeah. So yeah. wait, so. Name me 15 better oh. defenders than... Pff, that's, okay. so so, that's so easy. So, look, just off the top of my head, Cannavaro, Nesta, Baresi, De Boa, Turam, Desai, Yapstam, um, Rio Ferdinand, um, John Terry, Sol Campbell, then Sergio Ramos, Carlos Puyol, um, Samuel. What do we say? What do we say? What, 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 what do we say? Hey, Lucio. Lucio. Ronald Lucio, Coleman. Lucio. Ronald um, Coleman. Pepe. Lucio. Pepe. I would Lucio, say Lucio. For, for, for me, I would say Walter Samuel. I would say Pick Pepe. I would say Pick Pick Pepe as as, as well. Lucio. Lucio. Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Carvalho. Lucio. 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 Gerard PK. Beckenbauer. So, so, so yeah, Beckenbauer. You, you can roll with you can roll with Maldini. Beckenbauer. You can roll with um, you can roll with Lamb. I will even say Matt Hummels. I will even say Pick Barteng. So. If we're talking about guys at their peak, I'm sorry, I can <laughs> name you too no. many defenders better than Van Dyke because you have to understand about defending the art of defending. And when you look, and when we talk about great defenders, there are too many names. And here's the thing: only Liverpool fans are the guys who are already trying to say where will Van Dyke rate in terms of autumn defenders. It's only yeah, fans. Imagine yeah. that. Imagine. It's like non Liverpool fans are not mentioning Van Dyke in any all time list. No, it's only, it's only Liverpool fans that do this. Um, Ahmad. Is, it, is Ramos a horseman? No. He's definitely top 10 of all time, though. He's top 10 of all time. Easily top 10 of all time. Uh, Ramos? Uh, yes, he's like, top 10. He's top, top 10 five. of all time. Oh, oh, you put them top 5 too. Mm-hmm. Top five, yeah. Top ten. What was the question again? So, so basically, my thing is that where do you think Van Dyke will rank in terms of all-time defenders when he retires? How is his like twenty-seven, right? I think so. He's twenty-eight. Nah, he's twenty-eight. He's twenty-nine. He's, he's, 20, he's, 20, he's, 20, he's, no, he's twenty-nine. Nine. He's twenty-nine. Wow. Uh, I mean, he has he has five more years left, so I feel like uh, he he might be able to squeeze a euro euros in. I don't know, 
but uh, I think he has one more UCL and probably like two more EPL. So I don't, he might get into the top 10. He might, but I think right now he's like top 20, top 25. Okay. King Soul, I know you're a Liverpool fan. I know you're a Liverpool fan boy. If you're honestly telling me that Van Dijk is better than Sol Campbell, you're smoking crack. <laughs> you're smoking crack. If you're telling me that Van Dijk is better than Sol Campbell, who bowled for Tottenham, bowled for Arsenal, and bowled for England, three teams. Can Van Dijk bowl for Holland? Let's see what he does at the Euros. <laughs> Let's see what he does at the Euros. You're giving a sample size of two years. Maybe three. Two, three years of where he's been good. And you're talking about all time? He Ramos has been at the top of his game since 2010 mm -hmm. for Spain and for Real Madrid. Well, yeah, I did, yeah. So, so it is insulting that people even put him in the same category as Ramos, who for like a decade has been playing at the highest level for Spain and for Real Madrid. Can you be please see a Euros? Can we please see Liverpool fans? Guys, be real, man. Be real. Cassius. So if if he were to retire today, I don't know if I could put him in like top forty or something, like t top thirty, top forty, all time. Um, you know, we'll see what he does for for Holland, like you said. We'll see what he does for, uh, at the Euros, at the World Cup. But right now, just based off of what two and a half years, I mean, I can't put him all in. Like I said, top forty, top thirty, top forty. I just looked at how many international games he had before he joined Liverpool. 16. 16 games for the national team in, in you know, eight years of his professional career. So for his national team, you know, that's that's not that great. He's only been, you know, at the highest level for like two and a half, three years. And while he's been at Liverpool, so I can't see, put him. I see, and, and that's the thing. You see, King Stoll, you're just exposing yourself and we're just exposing this guy now. 29. So for the past, since he was 20 or 21, where has Van Dijk been? Well, we got to be objective here too. Let's be real. Cannavaro 06 kind of made him like a really, really top 10 greatest defender of all time. Like, that World Cannavaro, Cup... Cannavaro was still highly rated at Parma. People yeah, but, were still talking about Cannavaro in Parma. Yeah, but what happened when he Nesta. went to Madrid though? What happened when he went to, when he came to Real Madrid? That dude oh, no, was... No. He wasn't good, but <laughs> Cannavaro was... Why did he even get the move to Real Madrid? Because he won the World Cup. At, at, no, no. Oh, so he moved to Madrid. In yeah, after the World Cup. Yeah, after but the my, World Cup. But my thing is, he was already money. He was already money for Palmer. So yeah, people that is were already true. talking about him in Palmer. We were already talking about Van Dijk once he moved to Liverpool. So what were you doing when you were 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25? <laughs> so come on. Um, BD Cop, Van Dijk. Um, I think current. I'll say currently he's top. Um, he's top three. Currently he's top three, all time top twenty. So, um, so you're saying that he's already a top twenty defender of all time. The heck? All time. What? In, in wait, 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 what? Twenty. I will never <laughs> yeah. all time. Like, no, that better than top, Van Dijk. All, all time. He he doesn't reach top three, top five, top ten. He doesn't reach there at all. So you're saying he's a top twenty defender of all time? For me, I would put him in that that place, to either what? top twenty or top thirty, My for all time. time. But currently, I'll put him in top three. Is your is there a PK a top twenty defender of all time to you? No. Sorry, say it again. No. Say it again, Vilton. No. Is PK a top twenty defender of all time? PK. No, he's a top hundred. That's that's what PK is. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. Um, um, undisputed. Undisputed. Talk to us. Okay. Um, you can hear me now. Yeah. Can hear you. Yeah. If if you gave me a paper and a pencil and gave me about five minutes, I think I could write down fifty defenders greater than Van Dyke. Um, and here here's here's the thing, right? Look, Van Dyke was twenty three years old at the twenty fourteen World Cup, where Holland I think reached a semi and lost to Argentina. I think mm -hmm. he did. He didn't mm -hmm. even did he start? Did he make the squad? I think he was playing in the squad. I don't, I don't, I don't think he made the squad. I don't think he made the squad. He was playing the Scottish League at the time. Sergio Ramos was 23 years old at the 2010 World Cup. He was a starter and he won. I mean, this we're talking different levels here, man. Like in terms of legacy, we are talking completely different levels. Like you guys just listed a bunch of defenders better than him, and pretty much all of them were from the last 20 years. Did anyone mention Beckenbauer? 
Yeah, I miss him. Beckenbauer. Yeah, Beckenbauer, Passarella, Santa Maria. That's you see that's a very key point he made most of the names i mentioned because you see that's why i say king soul think about what you just said you see if you had said the last 10 years oh yeah top if you're saying all time throughout the history of the game he's not top 30 or top 40 or top 50 (laughs) all time Sorry, on the of current. R- Rugby. Like, like, here's just a random fact. Santa Maria won five Champions Leagues, I think, with Real Madrid in the 50s. I mean, does Van Dyke sniff that guy in terms of legacy? No, he doesn't. There's there's so many defenders. 60s, throughout the 70s, throughout the 80s. There's so many of them far, far, far better than Van Dyke. It's, uh, like, it's a complete joke to even think about him in the top 10. And I don't think he'll reach it either. I think he has a few years left at his peak, and then he'll decline. So no. Okay. Um, I'm sure critic. Absolutely not. I think it's just the Premier Premier League media hype that resulted in this. That even uh, led to comparisons between him and freaking Messi in, in the 18-19 season, where people were saying he deserved the Ballon d'Or for uh, not being uh, dribbled past, <laughs> apparently. Mm-hmm. And the next season, we saw what happened. He did. He got knocked out at Anfield. Really sure. hey, wow. He did, but how does that matter? He, he didn't uh, get dribble past at Atletico Madrid, but they knocked him out at Anfield. And, and he's only had one elite season. Oh, my goodness. He had, he had a great season in 1920, but he had truly an elite season in 1819. So, you can't just put him in a, as an all-time great for one great season. Like Undisputed said, we didn't, we didn't know who he was at the 2014 World Cup. He wasn't in the squad at all. So... Barely top 50. I think if he uh, uh, keeps going on in this trajectory, wins another Champions League, a couple of more Premier Leagues, uh, does well with Holland, then maybe, and he maintains this peak, then maybe he can crack the top 25, top 30. There have been too many great defenders if you go back all the way to the 50s, the 60s. It's it's a joke to make that comparison. All right. um, I'm Ham. Van Dyke. Um, yeah. Um, in terms of greatness, right now, if he was to retire right now, like he'd only be a Liverpool legend. Let's just be honest. Like, yes, he would only be a Liverpool legend. But if we're talking about greatest, we're talking about like level of the peak of ability. Like, you can't tell me about someone who's been consistent for ten years instead of someone who's actually been at the top of his game, being the best defender in the world. You know what I'm talking about? So what Which Van Dyke has done. Van Dyke, no, wait. Van Dyke has been the best defender in the world for like the past two years, three years now. It doesn't matter three if years. he only... He's been the best two, defender three. in the world for three years. Yeah, since he I came know. to Liverpool. Um, I agree, I agree. Years, e- even nah, when nah, it was nah, Southampton, nah, I, even... <laughs> I think Ramos, I think Ramos was still up there. Still, when Ramos was the best defender in 2018, maybe if you say 2019, I give you that. You Real Madrid guys for, forget what your captain has done. First All you guys all, ever think about is oh. All... No, my captain think Van about winning. Okay, okay, okay. So, so I'm on. So, so you're saying that Van Dijk should be in this mentioned in the same sentence? No, Ramos, Ramos won three seals. Come on. The, four, I mean, four, like, yeah. if, if you, if you, I, I, I bet you, you struggle to find five defenders who've had the defensive record um, Van Dijk has had throughout the defensive their, their record is a team thing, not an individual yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's, 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 it's a system but thing. But you guys think no, Henderson you, is key. Because, because, because I'm, 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 what happened when Henderson didn't play against Villa? How many Gs? <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. So, okay, the, so I when Real Madrid Ramos lost 5 no. That's fine. How many times has Richard lost matches and with big scores? Only, yeah, but it's, it's did, never been did seven. Did he ever hold seven? Did he ever hold seven? Did he ever hold seven? That so just ball. because he conceded yeah, seven yeah. with a bunch of young players beside him, that, that makes him a bad defender. I'm because that's, you, guys are, that's... You, know, you guys are making excuses for every other defender not See, being as good as Van Dijk. See, that's the, the other thing. thing, too, about being a defender, is usually the defender is... Not just defensively, but also going forward, what he does for Liverpool, very few defenders can do. So, okay, okay, so, okay, so, so, okay, so I'm ham. So, okay, so let me, let, let's just let's get this straight. Let's just get this straight. So, you say that as of right now, if he was to retire, he would just be a Liverpool legend. But 
Do you yes. believe that when he does retire, he can be considered top 10 defenders of all time? Definitely. Oh, Definitely. Yeah. I think, no, I, no, I, no, 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 You know what's no. crazy, though? No, no, what's he crazy doesn't about reach, it? He doesn't no, reach top 10. Come on now. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy for saying top 10. All those top 10 defenders that we all those top 10 defenders that we named, all those defenders that we named, they're all with a captain of their team. Van Dyke wasn't even a captain when y'all were losing 7 0 to Aston Villa. Henderson is your captain. Henderson is your captain. Like ah, with, Henderson is on that south side of people. Van Dyke is not really a leader. You, you, you guys have got issues, Villa. man. Why are you telling me about being captain? What does being captain have to do? It's about the, the highest level of play you can Sanju, reach. Don't, don't tell me. Wait, wait, let's go. So, so, I'm ham. I'm ham. Explain to me. Jeez. Waity, waity. I'm ham. Explain to me why you feel Van Dyke can end up being top 10 defender. Van Dyke can He's 29 years old right now. No world, yo. <laughs> Wait, when, talk. I'm going to talk, talk, 35, talk. When he retires at 35, as a defender, he could do so much more. He could still win maybe two more Champions Leagues. He could still win maybe three more leagues. So I don't see how that wouldn't make him. And he's still got a World Cup to go to. And he's got a Euro to go to. I'm not saying he's going gonna, he's gonna to win all of these things. But he can still put more things on his category to make him more of a legend than just a Liverpool legend. What he's done for Liverpool is great, but the rest of the world has, still has questions over him. But here's the thing. This guy, besides a goalkeeper effing him over, and all of these results you guys keep talking about is one goalkeeper doing the same nonsense over and over again. Don't forget. He's just only, that's the only issue he's got. When Alisson is behind him, what happens? What happens when Allison is there? Chelsea fans, please tell me what happened. Nothing. Nothing. You guys don't get nothing. No, no. They I lost four zero. They lost four zero to Man City when they were in the Etihad last season. Remember that? I remember that. Allison was there. Was Van Dyke was there. No, I remember my, that. My thing is, why you, isn't when Henderson's not playing? Van Dyke is not. You when Henderson's on the field, you see there's a leader on there. But when Van Dyke is given the captain armband, it's not. It's he's not, not a leader. Attention. Yeah, look, he's not look, 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 look. We're see, talking about that. Is, see, my thing is, is that Van Dyke. Let's just let's keep it real. Which is why I want to now see Van Dyke for Netherlands because I feel that Van Dyke owes. But you've him. seen Van Dyke for Netherlands. You've seen Van Dyke no, for Netherlands. Euros. Good. No, in a major tournament where it counts. Yeah. And in okay. We're gonna where it counts. He bottled in the Nations League. We can see. see, I'm mm-hmm. see you're talking about a guy who. We don't even see him perform internationally at a major tournament, which is a whole different standard and a, and a level. So, because my thing but is I've I seen him internationally anyway, let me speaking learn. good. My, my he bottled in the nation. My belief is that he benefits from the club system, and specifically, Henderson is a big reason why he doesn't have to do a lot of defending, just reading of the game and clearances. But in terms of actual defending, tackling, 1v1 clearances, he doesn't have to do a lot of them because Henderson and the system work really hard to ensure that he's he's protected. So now mm-hmm. you're with Netherlands and you don't have a Henderson and you don't have that kind of system. Let's now see how good you, you can do. Specifically, when you now have a brick manager like De Boer, who's now co- coaching you. So wait, let me... Can I ask you something? Wait, 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 wait. Let's get everyone to talk. But before I go to Abdullahi, let me just bring this up. So... Ramos, of course, has a better career than VVD, but ability wise, he's not better than VVD. Oh my so, god, what the heck so, are you guys smoking? So, so basically, a, a Liverpool fanboy, which is what this guy is a Liverpool fanboy who's not a football fan, he's, he's, a, he's a fanboy who feels he has to protect his players. So, you're saying to me that um, Van Dyke has is a better header of the ball, so you're saying me that he's got better passing in terms of long range passing. Tell me that he, he has a better balance in bringing the ball out. Tell me that he's a better 1v1 defender. Tell me that he's more tenacious and more <sighs> aggressive and more physical HH, than him. HH, but you, you don't want to listen to him. And it's like, you're mm-hmm. missing the most important thing. Ramos is the winner. Ramos is more than a winner. Than, Ramos no, is a winner. Yeah. To win on that pitch. No, no, no. Forget about winning. I'm talking about skill sets. I'm talking about um, heading. Aerial Ramos ability. Ramos do it all. Long he can, long can I tell you, can, a, I, can I answer kick. one thing though? Even free kick, Ramos is a better free kick taker than Van Dyke. It's not even close. Yeah. 
Van Dijk is not scoring that Champions League 2014 goal against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. I agree. Let's go to social. Let's go to Abdullahim. 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 Yeah. I think I am harm and them Liverpool fans. You guys need to chill. I beg, make an chill, please. I beg, I beg, I beg. I rate you guys and I respect you guys, but don't, don't bring the hunger in me at the moment. I beg. No, 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 no. When you're talking about a pure defender, there. Are, I can name you 10 defenders at the moment that are even better than Van Dijk. 10. Not, not even, not, Van Dijk is not even close. Uh, close to In the world right now. No. At the moment, I can name you 10 now that are even better than nah. Van Dijk. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Yo, you, what is that? Okay. Okay. What is okay. But when you're talking about the defender, you have to be, you have to be very actual, factual about it. No, no, no. You have to be. You have to be. Nah, okay. Abdullah, he, Abdullah, he's top 10 in the world right now. Come on, man. He's top 10 who, in the world right now. Who, who is the top 10? Who? who? Van Dijk, right now in the world, he's not the top Hell 10 no. defender for you? Ask no. No, currently he's top 3. Oh, currently he's nice. top 3. Yeah, Van, Dijk, no, no, no. Van Dijk is, is top 5 in the yes, world. Right now. Five. Right now, he's top right now, 5. Yeah, I agree. Let's come on. Come on. Top 10? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. Van Dijk, no. Top Abdullah. 10? Can you name that list, please, Abdullah? Can you name that okay. list? I'll give you at the moment that I I'll give you starting from number 10. I'm not even gonna put Van Dyke there because at the moment top 10. No. Give us your okay. list, my friend. Give us your list. <laughs> chill, chill, man. Chill. Stop talking. Give the list. With, with boy. Boy, chill. Look at that chill, man. Chill. At the moment, Ramos, better than Van Dyke at the moment. Ramos. You can call him. I call him Lucifer. Uh, just give us the names. Give us the names, man. First, chill, man, chill. First, Ramos. Second, I, I, I will say Piquet. Piquet may be break. Oh, oh. yes, Piquet. Yes. 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 Abdullah, you know. Abdullah, oh my goodness, you're I'm done. You know. Give up. I'm done. No, no, no. What? What are you smoking, yo? Abdullah, nah, 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 bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. PK is better than Abdullah. Abdullah, you could have said the guy who's bottled three times in a row, yo. Come on now. You could have said Laporte. You could have said Kulibale. You went to PK as your second name. Chill. You guys already messed up. Yes, yeah. You've already messed up. Let me give my reason. Let me give my reason. See, yeah, we may say Piquet has been bottling that he has been brave, but he has been very consistent for Barcelona. Yeah, he may be brave, but he's been, he's been very consistent for how many years? More than three years in which Van No, but we're talking about right now. You I see we say right now. Right now. Oh my yo. Yo, 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 yo. Right now, yo. there are five better Wait, but finish your list, though. Finish your list, though. Let me finish my list, Chief. Then, then we, can, we, can, we can put it to George. Ramos, for me. PK, Kaledo Kulubali. M. I. Mariana yeah. Laporte, for me. Hmm? Also, yeah, those, those are, I think, um, this guy. Four, four. Know. Okay, okay, four now. For, what's his name? This guy from um, AC Milan. What's his name? Um, Robert Nelly. Alex and Lelam. Yep. No yeah. No chance. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> Yeah, no <laughs> chance, man. You don't even know his name. <laughs> oh, shoot. Where's Hazel? Wait, wait. Let, let, him, let him finish his list. Let him finish his list. Let him finish, let him finish his list. Let him finish his list. Let him finish his list. Yo, finish it. Finish it. Yo, finish it. Finish it. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Hazel has a gun to his head, man. That's fine. No, no, I need Hazel. Finish your list, though. Finish your list. I'm curious. Five, six. You guys may say he has been, it's not been doing it for the past year. Diego Silva is there for me. He is there. Tiago Silva is there for me. People may say okay. it's not been... It's, okay, it's that's not been, six. What's seven? Who's seven? Who's seven? Who seven? It's, it's been, it, 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 people may say it's not been, but Tiago Silva is for me is there. That's seven. I, I, that's six. Go, six. That's six. For me, I think no, my, my, no, number seven is this guy. Um, What's his name? Um, <laughs> I've forgotten his name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you killed kill the whole vibe right, right there, yo. Oh, you serious? Guy. You Chill, killed man. the whole vibe. Um, <laughs> Wait, I'm curious. Why don't you have Varen up there at least? At least put Varen up there. At, at least. That's what I thought he was going to do that too, yo. I thought to you were going to put Varen. I thought you were going to say Varen. You're not... <laughs> Hey Abdulli, what about Maguire? What about Ty, Maguire? Even Abu okay. Makano. What Ty, Abu Makano or something, yo? Like, no. <laughs> okay, so okay, so you need to name three people, Abdulai. Who are the three? The three next people. So uh, uh, my six, I've named them. What's called Thiago Silva. Thiago. Now, my yes. seven is um, um Rafa Varane of Real Madrid. So uh -huh. my number eight, uh, number eight is um this guy's name that plays for. Um, <laughs> 
I want to get my back to him. Liverpool doesn't get him that high. But I yeah, what team does he, he play for? What team does he play for? He play for Atletico Madrid. Um, Jimenez. 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 Yeah, yeah, Jimenez. He has been good, but he's good. Jimenez is okay. good. Okay. Okay. So who's number nine? Jimenez is good. Okay, so number nine. I think my number nine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that it is paper. That's I, 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 I'm mentioning another fan, man. So you got two, um, Jimenez, and um, I think the last two, I, I, I I'll give it to. Um, let me see. Maguire. Uh, <laughs> but, oh, 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 oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> number nine. Who's Phil, number nine? Blue Phil line? Jones. Phil Jones. Phil yeah. Jones. Who, who is Phil Jones? That guy. Smalling. Is Smalling. Chris Smalling. <laughs> <laughs> who's number nine? Blue line? Who's number nine? Who's number nine? Uh, number nine. Um, uh, I, think, I can't you. I can't. I'm like, can I just say, can I just say very quickly, this has been a complete and utter failure. No, 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 and total failure. So, but, and I thank you for the entertainment. This was entertaining, but this was a total failure. You, you, you failed. Let me see. And like, if I was marking you, you'd get a U for on You don't even have David Alaba on there, too. You forgot about David Alaba. Alaba is a left back before he became combat. No, but he didn't have a center back. He plays, he has played center back this season. Mm-hmm. So okay, look, look. Um, <laughs> let's see, guys. Send questions. Send questions. Send questions, man. We're, we're rolling through content cracks. Send questions. So Jamal Gaskin says, Ramos with Van Dyke, Messi, Ronaldo, Swiss Army knife versus Body knife. Catch my drift. Look, this is the world that we live in. We will all people will always compare. People will always always compare. It is what what it is. People always compare. It's 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 the world. It's the world we're in, and it's something that we're just gonna simply have. It's it's it. I have a question for you. Go for it, go for it. Uh, do you think uh, Juventus will extend Cristiano's contract if they don't win the Champions League in the next two seasons? Yes, because if... Mm, the, that's a good question. How, how, how that ends is if Cristiano ends it. Because it's not about what he does on the pitch and he's been pretty on the pitch. What he does off the pitch is huge. Because remember, this is... Um, actually, that's a good question here. This is a, it's a branding thing as much as a performance thing. The amount yes. of shirts he sells, how he puts the focus on the event, the Juventus brand has, in, has increased. Look at our dear friend Martin Rosario and FG. They're now UV fans because of Chris <laughs> Cristiano. It's, and F- Syria, Syria so, really went up too when he went to Syria. Yes, the so, so, so basically as, as, a, as a brand business-wise, you have already gone up in your fanship and the amount of activity that your Twitter has, your Instagram has, and your shed sales has. So there is no way. You see, that is only ending when Cristiano ends. It's because you're dealing with a commodity that is continued, that that will continue to be profitable for you off the pitch until he retires, you know, because his fanship Mm -hmm. is is madness. Why? Why? I I think it's... Oh, Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, why uh, has, um... oh, 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 okay, Ahmad then, Bidiko, Ahmad. Talk about goes to Juventus, Cristiano can play until 50, I'm telling you, bro. Wait, 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 say again? If Pogba goes to Juventus, Cristiano can play until 50. Why? Because of Pogba supplying him and providing yes. for him. Yes, Cristiano is going to be a pure finisher. That's why I think a Cristiano Messi thing will work now, because well, he can't you know, dribble. You know, you know, that's the funny thing is that I think Cristiano may just continue to just. I mean, cause my thing is that when will he retire? I think after that's, the World Cup, that's it. After the I World Cup, think, no. I guess he'll just keep on playing. Because I think he'll, actually, I, you know what? I think he'll give his all in the, the two Champions Leagues and the Euros, and then he'll absolutely go all out in the World Cup and then retire. There is no nah. reason for him to come back after he, the World Cup and go he's again. Gonna at, he's gonna play at least to forty, so another four years. Maybe he'll go to MLS. Maybe Ahmed. All right, so, so, so what's it called? Bidiko, you wanted to say something, Bidiko. Yeah, I I think it's, I think the problem here is um, age, 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 age. I don't know if he has enough years in him. He's, the, he's 35, he's 35, so he could play the he's, he's 35. Yeah, I, I, I think... Four more years, four more years or five more years. Yeah, I, I think it's, it, it also depends, for me, the thing too is what I will say is, I think Cristiano... Him keeping himself fit, like you know, he's someone who really keeps himself fit. He's not like Messi. Messi is not like oh, all about taking care of his body and mm. you know. Most most most, most most players aren't like like, like that though. So yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you see, but Ronaldo is in good shape. 
Y- yeah, but he's not like Ronaldo. Like, you know, yeah, Ronaldo... Yeah, like, yeah, like he, Cristiano is obsessed with his physical shape and health and everything. Shaping, so. Yeah, yeah. And I think that might help him to even play longer. For me, that's how I see it because he really keeps like his um, body shape in good health. So you I don't think... know. It... <laughs> okay, 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 you okay, think wait, 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 Messi wait, wait, wait. would have to? Okay, wait, let me, wait, 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 wait. Let's, 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 let's get this question. This is a good question, man. Mm-hmm. Um, so question here is what are your thoughts on how Mesut Ozil is being treated at Arsenal. So here's my thing is I don't know the ins and the outs. But this is just where I am very simply from a very simple point of view. If you offer me a contract for 300,000 a week, I didn't ask for it. You you gave that to me. I sign it. Nobody nobody should say anything to to me. Nobody should say anything to to me. So I don't want to hear anything about Ozil is greedy. Why don't you do this? No, 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 no. Ozil is like, if you want to play me, play me. The thing with Aston is they obviously can't offload him. They can't sell him off. And Ozil ain't going to just leave. He's going to stay there with that contract that was signed and continue earning the whole money because it is weird. He is on 300000 a week and he wasn't even included in the Europa League squad. So you're paying a guy that much money who is literally not offering you anything. Because I remember there was, um, for Chelsea, Pierluigi Casiraghi. He was injured for like about two years, but he was still being being paid. And I was like, man, look how this guy's being paid. But I said, like, look, he's injured. So it is what it is, but you still have to pay him. But he was, he was injured. But he was earning money, doing nothing for two years, but he was injured. Ozil is fully fit, ready to play. But Emery didn't want him, and obviously Arteta does not have him in, in, in his in his plans. So it is a this is a fault for Arsenal. There is a there is nothing you can say bad towards Ozil because for Ozil, I'm like, if you were in his position, I can be like, oh, you know what? Because I'm not playing or anything, you know, even though that guys are not picking me, I'm going to cut the contracts. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna um, make sure that that's, that's that you guys don't have to pay me three hundred thousand and so forth. So what is he supposed to do? So I mean, who wants, who wants to jump in on, on this? For me, wait, wait. um, it's oh, okay. Oh, Before we okay, be the call, be the call, go for it. Okay, yeah, for me, H H, um, I I really feel sad for Uzil. I really really feel sad for Uzil because, you know, he, there was a time at Real Madrid, right, where like he was literally one of Real Madrid's best players you know, in their team. Now, my thing about Uzo is I think I think he might need a move back to the Bundesliga. This is how I see it. It, mm-hmm. it could help him. It could help him. I, I think it could resurrect Go his back career. to Germany. Go back home. Go back home, yeah. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? No, no, no. Because, but, like... No, but, but, but he's on 300000 a week. Why should he forego <laughs> that amount of, of money? He's he's on he's in three thousand. Mm-hmm. He's in three thousand a week, but I know clubs such as, for example, Hertha Berlin, who will offer him over three three hundred thousand um the, the can, week. Which... You're joking. You know, no, there's no that, club that, in they can Germany offer for over three hundred thousand. No, don't don't. Nah, no, not the small no. club. If it's like a PSG like, or City, I can understand. If I mean, it's three hundred thousand could... is amongst that's the amongst the highest that anyone is is. Only guys like Messi are getting paid high. 300,000. Do you know how much that, that is? Gary Bill's getting paid that much. I mean, you know, they have money though. They have mo- like Germans have, like the German they have money, have but money. there's thing about mm-hmm. having money and having money. <laughs> there are and levels budget, how much yeah. money you have. 300,000 mm-hmm. is because as I, as I learned, Arsenal have the highest mm-hmm. season ticket prices in, the, in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. And Stan Kroenke is a very astute businessman, hence why he's run the club for a business. So the money is there, hence why there is money to pay him. Mm-hmm. So Ozil, Ozil in his mind, see, at, at one point you can be like, Ozil, if you have any pride for yourself as a football player, you do what Bidiko says, go back to Germany, rekindle <laughs> yourself, because I'm sure that <laughs> nah, there are many nah, teams nah, that, nah. that will still work. 
Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. that is too much money. Yeah, that's what I'm like. That's way too much. I'll stay if I'm but, but, that. Oh, okay, so then, so then, is Saudi Arabia or like one of these um, Turkish I heard about Saudi Arabia? I so yeah. I was reading, I was reading mm-hmm. something, and some, and I, it was also on someone else. I can't remember the other player, but I heard Saudi Arabia was an option for for where he wants to go. Look. It it's really sad, yo. To be honest, guys, when, guys when did he sign that contract? When did he sign that big contract? Last year, last year, last year, last year. Last year. Why, must, why did Arsenal really even money. offer him that much money? If the guy, it was the best player last year. Was the oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah, it was the best. No, no. Player. I mean, it's it's it, it is well. Actually, wait, let me let me just quickly check this super chat from. But at the same Jimon, time, though, Gaskin. Wait, 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 wait. Who says thank you for the super chats? What I'm asking is that you get more with one. Okay, sorry. So this is completely you get more with one than the other. Ramos can score, take free kicks, get red cards, left my answer. But seriously, VD has to prove more. Hundred percent. Like you see, this is the thing. It is only Liverpool fans and Liverpool fans alone who even entertain Van Dyke saying what's up to Ramos. No non-Liverpool fan is ever saying, you know what, Van Dyke. No one is ever saying that. Even Barcelona fans who hate Real Madrid recognize that Ramos in his generation is one of the best defenders of his generation. And you can at least have an argument of top 15 all-time or top 20 all See, that's the thing about Ramos. I'm, in terms of us as the in terms of us a defender, I wouldn't put defend and Ramos top 10 all-time just based on just his ability. But he might be top 20. So if I'm putting Ramos top 15 or top 20, maybe, Van Dijk isn't sniffing top 30. <laughs> so people people don't realize that when you say all time, you have to respect all time, which means that there have been a lot of defenders all time. But you, you just people just say a statement like, oh, this, this, that. But I know. You know, you have to respect the whole thing of all time. Um, so who else wants to talk on this whole Ozil thing, man? Why, why would we be so mad at Ozil? Like, the guy's willing to cut his way. They didn't have to play for the Gunnosaurus to be back in job. Like, Ozil's like a humble guy. Like, what guy would pay for a mascot just like just to bring it back to the club? Like, why he's, do Arsenal hate, hate it on he's that? He's doing man? it like, for a flex, though. It's like, the guy I is think, humble, know, man. Guys, as I people think, have uh, said, wait, wait, wait. As, as people have said, Viltron. If you were so cared so much truthfully about <laughs> ab- 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 about about our bombers mascots <laughs> Gonosaurus, you wouldn't do it in private. Why post it on Twitter? Twitter? So, to show his humbleness, man. It's humble. Yeah, no. oh, okay, so sorry. Before I come to Abdullahi, let me just hit this. So, happy birthday to Latin. Happy birthday <laughs> to Lozario. Happy birthday, you break. Next time you should bow to me. Happy birthday, Latin Rosario. I uh, your humor and everything sucks, but it is what it is. I still have to contend with it. You absolute loser. But hope you enjoy your day of birth. Maybe on your day of birth, maybe appreciate the content crack I gave you. Um, so enjoy your birthday. From Namdi Wajide says, How highly do you rate Zidane as a coach? And how good do you think Real Madrid would will be if they get Mbappe, Kamavinga, and Haaland. <laughs> okay, maybe we can sort of break this down. So, because I want to get some other guys to speak who have not spoken. So, um, Zidane as a coach. Here's my thing about Zidane. Special. I will never put Zidane in the same category as Pep, Mourinho, Klopp, Capello, Lippi, Ancelotti, all these dudes. Um, but... Let's see, because those guys have 20 years in the game. Let's see what he does 10, 15, 20 years into the game, and let's see what he does for France. What I will face with Zidane is that give him his credit, because you don't win three seals in a row by luck. There is, and I think he has great man-to-man management, because we saw what that same team was with Pepe Benitez, and we saw how different it was when Zidane got there. It was the same team that Benitez had, and Zidane had that same team, and was far more effective with them. So... I think it's a case because I don't believe Zidane can go to any team and do well like Mourinho can. No, but I just feel this is a great fit and people need to, at the very least, appreciate the guy's coaching and what he can do. Um, how good do you think Real Madrid will be if they get Mbappe, Kamavinga? Oof. Sexual. If they get Sexual. all those three, Sexual. they will be 
Sancho it's been or... almost unstoppable because you've got a crazy goal scorer in Haaland. Um, Kamavinga, I don't know because let me see more and more of him. If if you if I have a team of Mbappe and Haaland, that is crazy. Um, Cassius, what do you think about this? Zidane as a coach, and if Real Madrid get those three dudes, I'm a I'll start with uh, the three dudes: Mbappe, Kamavinga, Haaland. First of all, Haaland, you know, as long as Zidane is there, the only number nine that's going to play is Karim Benzema. So, uh, I mean, if Haaland. If Haaland signs for Real Madrid next season and Zidane is still there, then he's not going to play. Kamavinga, I think he's a good player. Uh, I think he's a, a very good player. Um, yeah, so I think that would be a good replacement for Modric, and Mbappe would be would be excellent. But by signing Mbappe, you would be you would be admitting that Hazard has been a flop because Mbappe <laughs> plays on the left wing, and Hazard Hazard, you know, and even Vinicius. Vin- Vinicius, he's being important this season. So both of those players would would be pretty much useless if you sign Mbappe. So three names that are uh, very good on paper, but in reality, I only think Mbappe would be would be a big difference maker in terms of uh, an improvement on the team this season. And Zidane as a coach, I think, like you said, he's a good. He has in. In terms of intangibles, I think he's really good because he can get a tune out of out of the team. We saw that with uh, with Real Madrid after the after the break. Whenever they needed to win, they won, even though they didn't play well. Even even now, they don't play well. I mean, they struggled to beat Levante, they struggled to beat Real Valladolid, but you know they win. So, but I think this season will be interesting because now I think he's under more pressure than he has ever been under. Because he's, you know, he wanted to sign Hazard. He wanted to sign Jovic, and now people are questioning him. If you see his press conferences, he, you know, he he gets really mad when they ask him about Jovic. Mm. So I now think I think that now he is under the most pressure he's ever been, and it'll be interesting to see what he does. Okay, uh, Vilton. Oh yeah, as a coach, <clears throat> he's definitely. One of the greatest Real Madrid coaches to ever do it. Because we can't deny that three CL in a row, that's that's special. Then I don't. Maybe it is Juju, but it was also tactics too. But the guy is special. He he leaves. We were in shambles. He comes back. We went La Liga. So um, the guy. I'm not saying he's one of. He's better than Ferguson, Mourinho, than Lep and stuff like that. But in terms of what he did with Real Madrid, that's something special. I don't think we're gonna see that. For a while, like a mat, an ex coach, an ex player, come to the come to his old club, win three CL in a row, and if we get Mbappe, it's sexual pull. It's not. It's not even a question. Kavenga, like that. It's, it's a sexual pull. No one is stopping us. And it, it's, it's. I have this question for you. if CR mm-hmm. seven wins the World Cup, is he a horseman for you? <laughs> don't say. Don't say he has to score in the final. Like don't say he has to score in the final. What if he just wins we'll, it? Is he a we'll, horseman? We'll we'll we'll, we'll 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 cross that bridge if we need to get. There. <laughs> we'll cross the bridge if we need to get there. BD Cole, um, so Zidane is Zidane a great coach? And what happens if they get Mbappe, Kamavinga, and Haaland? I think Zidane has to be one of uh, the best coaches in world football right now. Um, he's done, he's basically, I feel like he's achieved everything a coach needs to achieve <laughs> in his career, basically. Um, except for, you know, he has, he doesn't have the World Cup, probably, you know, he doesn't have the Euros, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, Real Madrid getting Kamavinga and Haaland and Mbappe, I actually think getting Kamavinga is really good because, like, the reason why I'm saying this is, th- this is just from my dormant perspective. Like how I see it is, if you get Kamavinga, he has more years. You know, what I'm trying to say, like we bought Haaland because there's more years than let's say Al Al Castro. Al Castro was really old. Like he's not someone who you know will give you seven or eight more years or something like that. But if you look at Erling Haaland, when we bought him, we knew he was going to give us more years. The same thing goes with Kamavinga. I think Kamavinga will give Real Madrid a lot of years ahead of him. That's why... But, I but, 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 then, but then, do you... Because he could just be hype. Because I feel Jao Felix was, was all hype. Same thing with Frank De Jong. Do you believe that Kamavinga mm-hmm. in four or five years is going to be this huge thing? 
and so Fati, how because again we, we can't just say oh he's really good when he's young he'll be huge mm-hmm. everyone said that when rooney the the white pele i, I remember reading him mm-hmm. being called the caucasian pele but then he ended up scoring what one World Cup goal in like three attempts and not really doing much so sorry whoa okay <laughs> okay i think okay <laughs> moving on very swiftly um i am ham yeah, hello, hello. Can you hear me? We'll, 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 we'll come out to you. We'll come out to you. Just sort out your baby mama issues. <laughs> um, I'm Ham. Um, is Zidane a great coach? And what if they get Mbappe, Kamavinga, and Haaland? Will they rule the world? Um, am I supposed to not talk about the the Ozil topic, though? Oh, okay. okay. Give it to, okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, Ozil. Talk to me about Ozil, then. You see, the thing with Ozil is that, like, Ozil, this is, is, is more, this thing with Arsenal, it's more about, like, um, what it's about beliefs, basically. And um, I think Ozil is a legend for what he's doing because he a said legend. he's not going to take, yeah. He's, he's like, Ozil, obviously, um, the thing with the Muslims that was happening in China stood up, um, stood up to that. Mm-hmm. And Arsenal obviously separated themselves, um, and then since then, Ozil has not really been cooperating with the with the Arsenal high ups. Um, they wanted him to take a, a what's it a, a wage gap break or something, um, and he said he wouldn't do that because Arsenal has the money to support everything, and um, so basically, what the guy is doing now is telling Arsenal. They must pay him. He's um, he's three hundred fifty thousand a week, and um, he's gonna pay Canasaurus, and he's not gonna do a damn thing on the pitch. So, I think the guy is um, is making quite a statement, and I think Arsenal, a lot of clubs need to be worried about what um, Ozil is doing because there are many clubs out there who who do some shady stuff. Such as your Man Cities, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, if Ozil can do this, what happens when a De Bruyne does it? What happens when a Messi does it? Like, I think what he's doing is setting a good example um, to show that even in football, that the the worker is still the most important person. Well, I mean, our dear friend I J says. You wouldn't believe how manipulative he is. So maybe there is something about this story and this detail that we just merely don't know. Maybe there is something that we just don't know, man. You know. Um, H H. Can I? Okay. Can I now talk? Go for it. Go for it. Billy, go for it. Yeah. So what I, what I was saying is, um, Kamavinga has a lot of years ahead of him, and I think yes, I really agree. I think he's going to be the next big thing. Um, you know, he. Oh, 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 okay. What? What makes you think is going to be the next big thing? Like, what evidence do you have that he'll be the, he'll bro, be the next big thing? Bro, 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 him and Ansu Fati ha- are the youngest scorers in national teams history. Like, this is crazy, bro. Kamavinga is, Kamavinga is France's young goal scorer. Also, his defensive contributions are amazing. Um, he, he know his touches are really good. He's he's like for me how I see his decision making is good, like he has a lot of years in him. His potential is really good. One thing I want to say though too is, um, I think Real Madrid need him because they need some fresh legs in that midfield. I know they have Fede Valverde, but I think Modric is past his prime. And not only do I think Modric is past his prime, but I also think um. Players like Casemiro and Kroos are slowly fading away too. So it's it's good to get Kamavinga. Also, what I want to say too is Mbappe, they seriously need Mbappe. Like, Real Madrid don't have a natural goal scorer. Like, this is why Real Madrid won the three CLs is because they had a natural goal scorer in Cristiano Ronaldo. So you add Mbappe to the fray, Mbappe gives you that goal scoring attribute. You understand what I'm trying to say? That let's say... Um, be, that could relieve some of the goal scoring pressure off of Benzema, which Benzema has or has always had to do. You know, he's had to create and also goal scoring. But if Mbappe comes in, Mbappe can relieve some of that pressure. 
Um, Holland too can relieve some of that pressure too, because they could play a four four two, play as a two like how they were doing with Cristiano Ronaldo and Benzema, where they played as a two as a striker. So it could be Holland and Benzema, and that could be a deadly strike force right there and then, you know. So I I think Holland is Madrid bound. I think Mbappe is Madrid bound. But Kamavinga, for me, of course, he's going to be the next big thing. No question about it. I mean, more years in him, and it, it just makes a lot of sense for Madrid to go for him. That's that's okay. how I see it. So let's end it with this because I think it's fair because we 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 we, 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 we we've talked a lot, guys. He's coming. He's coming. He was. He's been injured. He's coming, and you know who I'm talking about. He's coming. The he's coming. Edge, he's the edge. He's, He's, he's he's left the his national team early because he wants to be ready, guys. He's, he's coming. The who's? He's coming. The who's? He's. He, I don't want to hear any any hisses here as well. He's coming, guys. We have been waiting for this for decades. This is a place that I have vouched for. <laughs> Hazard, thank you for making me look look like a fool. I'm hoping my African brother will not do the same. Guys, he's here. Guys, he is coming. And I think this is where we can now see where people will say, HH, you were right. So, guys, I want to know right now, how excited are you for the Yetch? Because we saw what the Yetch did for Ajax. Yes, what? Can I land? 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 Thank you. We saw, serious, what the edge, we saw what the edge we saw what the edge did for Ajax and we know this guy's ability because we know this guy's ability because we know that this guy is in the man he was in and he's gonna come and say what's up because we feel he's gonna say what's up so I want to gauge around the entire room because this is big it is massive this is the player that everybody's been waiting for this has been the signing <laughs> of the you've summer. Been waiting for. This has been the signing of the summer, and <laughs> I can, and his debut. We hope and we pray is against Southampton, where he's going to say what's up and finally bring Chelsea back to the forefront, with or without Lampard. I don't care. Yetch will lead to get to Wilton. How excited are you for the Yetch finally to make his debut for Chelsea? I'm going to be objective here. I'm not excited at all. I don't really care about Chelsea Football Club. No, Wait, offense, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Mo, don't do that. Man, that's Mo, harsh, yo. Mo, that's Mo, really don't harsh. Do that. Mo, don't do that. Mo, don't do that. That's No, no, Mo, come on, bro, don't do that. Look, I learned my lesson against Hazard. Mo, don't do that because that's sending out bad karma. So, Mo, if the edge breaks it, Mo, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you and I will find you. Mo, don't do that. That's really, that's not nice. That is not nice at all. That is not nice. Please take that back. Wilson, the yeah. how, how, how excited is, are you for He's the a very, very good player. But my, I'm worried. It's like there's some sort of juju's going word on about, around Chelsea. Word about, what, word about what? Because Pulisic is getting injured. Manny is injured. Ziyech is, I hope he doesn't get injured. Like There's some juju that's going on at Chelsea football camp right now. I don't know what's going on. And you need to stop hyping those players up because you're setting up to fail. No, no, I don't no, want no, Ziyech no, no, to no, fail, no, but stop hyping no, no, them hold, up. No, wait, wait, hold, hold up. Let me okay. Let me be clear, guys. Clip this, Gatlock. You you lose a clip. This <laughs> this isn't hype. This is about friendliness and hope. My name is Half Hope. Okay. I hope he says okay. what's up. But this is about excitement. This is not hype. Please, please, be listen, listen because this is important. This is not hype. I'm not hyping up to, up to anything. This is hope. He could fail. He could be a break. Uh-huh. He could be a loser. So this is still excitement, Vilton. Okay. Yeah. I'll be I'll be happy. So what this guy did with Ajax was amazing. Technic, he's really good technically. Ability wise, is really good. Ajax, he's really good on the ball. Hey, Ajax has more Champions League than your entire club. They got four. So yeah, hey, but, hey, yeah, hey, but hey, Ziyech, hey, Ziyech, hey, Ziyech, Ziyech is a really good player. I'm I'm excited to watch him too. I I'm I don't wish injuries on anybody, but hopefully he doesn't get hurt because there's something's going on around Chelsea Football Club right now. And the other thing before I before I go, if Zidane coaches France and wins a World Cup, Zidane's the greatest manager of all time, bro. <laughs> He's the greatest of all time. <laughs> There's no argument there. But Beckenbauer won the World Cup and the Euros, I think. Yeah, but Beckenbauer then went three CL in a row, though. 
and he didn't score the greatest goal ever in a Champions League final. And he didn't he didn't score two Gs in the World Cup final. He didn't carry France to the 06 World Cup final. So Zidane will be the greatest manager of all time if he does that, in my opinion. Yeah, I could call me crazy, but that's an unbelievable unbil- feat, man. All right. So, Wilson, thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. So, before I come to Ahmad, Namdi Wajide says, well, thank you for the super chat. Why do you rate Ziyech so highly? Let me put it very simply. I feel that I felt he was one of Ajax's best players when they were went on that run to the semis. I think he was better than De Ligt. I feel he was better than Frank Dungan. He was one of their best players. How Chelsea play is perfectly suited for someone like Ziyech because he can play a multitude of, of positions. He drifts all along the pitch. He is very dynamic. He's very free. He's not rigid. And I can already visually see... Again, it may not work, but I can already visually see how he could fit into this team. But again eye test baby i'm all about the eye test what i saw from that guy do for ajax I was like who is this dude who is this kid again i don't know what happened when he was at the nation's cup because when he played at the nation's cup he, he didn't really pop off for, for morocco but even this both seasons even the season when chelsea and ajax were in the same group he still said what's up because remember that goal he scored against chelsea that crazy goal from the angle he passes the eye test and when he passed the half up ice which is tough I have my eye on you and you are on my radar. Um, so, Ahmad, how excited are you for ZH's debut? I mean, I think he's a pretty good player, but I feel like the hype you're putting on him, and I secretly think, like, some EPL players watch your thing. I'm not even kidding. And I think, like, because, I don't know, I think because the, the expectation is so high and considering the fact that he's supposed to have, like, he, theoretically, he has good pieces around him in the midfield and attack. So the expectations are high, and I just think uh, I don't think he'll be terrible, but I think he'll be underwhelming, and you'll be disappointed, and you just go on another rant, and you know. Ahmad, don't don't put out that evil, 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 evil thing, man. Yeah, why do you think why do you think Cristiano and Messi are so successful? Because you don't like them. Whoever you like flops. I like Robin, and Robin is a treble winner. Yeah, but, but now, won, and yet he I mean, flopped. Now, but he, you said he the World Cup was the biggest now, day. Now what? He flopped at the World Cup final. Okay, now what? He flopped at the World Cup final. The World Cup is the biggest trophy, right? Treble, treble. The World Cup is the biggest trophy. He was choking in the World Cup final. He was best player in 2014. Best player in 2014. Best player in 2014 World Cup. And R9 said, "What's up?" In Otsu. So now what? Don't, don't. Yo, R9 is a UCL flop. Whoever is a UCL flop. How many how many World Cups does Christina have? How many World Cups does Messi have? Is Arnen a useful flop? Yeah, yeah, answer the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th- I thought so. I thought so. I thought so. <laughs> you want to answer or am I? I thought so. Ahmed, you want to so. answer the question. Moving on swiftly. Moving on swiftly. Moving, on swiftly. Moving on swiftly. Moving on swiftly. Um, Los Cochineros, thank you for the switch. Cochineros. HH, big games tomorrow. England, Belgium, Portugal, France, which we've, we've previewed this. We are entering our third hour. It's been three hours of content crack. So, yeah, um, we have already done this. I will put the clips up later. Guys, subscribe, like the vid, subscribe, like the vid, subscribe, like the vid, like the vid, subscribe, subscribe, and like the vid. Contents crack, contents crack. Cassius, Abdullah, you don't have up desires, please. How, how, how um, hyped are you for the for the edge, Cassius? Um, I don't think hype hype is the the thing you want because anyone you hype up, you know, you oh. know I'm gonna you don't oh. you know I'm gonna finish the sentence. Just look at Hazard. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's just just look at Hazard. Look, no, Hazard, but can but you, wait, 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 Hazard, can you just please bowl this year so that I can actually look good, please? Thank you. We'll carry on. So, in serious, seriously, I think I think Ziyech will do do well. I just don't know how Chelsea will will line up because they have they have Werner, they have uh, Tammy, they have Giroud, they have Pulisic. I I don't know what uh, the formation will be which players he'll be playing with if he'll play regularly because you know Lampard like he Mount so. I don't but I mean Mount I don't give a damn whether that guy likes man well you know it's still Lampard he's a PE teacher he he likes the, the children he likes Mason Mount so you know I think ZH has the ability 
for me, it's just down to how consistently he plays because he started the season off with an injury and now he has to work his way into the team. So I don't think he'll start the first game 90 minutes, second game 90 minutes, third game 90 minutes. So I don't think that will happen because of the other players that are there that also need to play. And think, because I, I, I it's I Lampard, I but... I'll come to you, Cassius. So yeah, Ziyech, Ziyech has the ability. I just I just need to see him put put together several consistent performances, and then we'll talk. All right. Um, <laughs> Verge, how excited are you for the Yech debuting for um, Chelsea? I'm not excited, but he's a good player, you know? What, wait, 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 wait. Why, why aren't you excited? He's all right. He's not, not amazing. Not, not us. He's all right. And also, Verg, is it true that you are no longer a Liverpool fan? You're now a Real Madrid fan because of... Yes, so yes. So. I've moved on. We broke up. We broke up. We broke up. It's My only one God, game. 7-2. 7-2. 7-2. Come on, man. 7-2. Wait, wait. It's only one how, game, mate. How can you stop supporting the great club of Liverpool after only one game? It's not just one game. It's the football. This football is terrible. It's terrible, Bro, please. It's 80 the Chelsea fan. <laughs> they haven't won the Champions League in eight years. He's still supporting Vilton, Chelsea. Vilton, Vilton, relax. Do you Vilton, see the relax. football? This is not football. What's crossing the shot line? This is not football. This is pain. What is this? Okay, okay, nah, fair nah. enough, fair enough. Okay, all right. Um, At seven two, nah, nah, that is. Okay, okay, okay. okay. We're studs, okay. we're studs, we're studs, yeah. Abdul Ab- 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 no, 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 no. You're, you're going last. Abdul you're, 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 you're going to go last. You're going to go last. I am ham. I am ham. The, how excited are you for, for for the edge? I'm very excited, HH. You know what I mean? I need to see, like... You know, you Chelsea guys have told me you guys are oh, here we go. gonna here win we go. for every match you go into. It did not I'm so happy. You guys did not mention God, four nil on your last match. No, no, no. Let him lie. Let him lie. Let him, lie. Let him not just lie. A four hole no. Like congratulations, you guys are amazing in that match. Tammy, oh, that's my boy. But you know, we just have to see what happens now. Will ZH be that guy? I don't know. Is ZH really that good? I don't know. Let's just see. Let's see what he does. Okay. BD Cole, how excited are you for the Edge, man? Um, yeah, HH, what I wanna say is um you know I I I just don't understand this, but you see how I said Ansu Fati was gonna be the next big thing, but you never really um, talked about that, but you really give attention to ZH. <laughs> look at what, look at what Fatih has been doing. Look at what Fatih has been doing. Fatih has been better than Fazard <laughs> in the past couple of months. He's been better than Fazard. He's been better than um ZH in, in like literally the span of a couple of games. What I'm saying is, um, no, no, okay, you say, wait, wait, guys, we have to stop that nickname, Fatsad. No, let's let's stop that nickname. Man. That's, it's that a nickname. great name, great name, great name. Great name. Great name. Call, finish your bloody points, man. Okay, so my my point is, um, to be honest, um, I think he's a good addition to Chelsea. Um, I think he adds to Chelsea winning the Champions League. And I think um, Chelsea, like I said, are one of the Champions League favorites this season. I think they can do something. I really do think so. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Ah, that's right. it, man. That's the issue. Abdullahi, send me the minimum. Send me the minimum. Easy, easy, easy. Very shush, shush, shush. Uh, Abdullahi, now tell me now. Let's, let's be objective here. Let's be objective. Don't call him the play. play. Don't call him the play. Oh, let's, so like what? Saying, what can we expect from the edge? What can we expect from the edge? That team I'm I'm, I'm seeing with, uh, with the team of Timo Werner, Kai Havard, um, Christian Pulisic, and Pulisic, and then um, Akim Zayed. I think in that team, what we are lacking in that team is we need someone who can pa- we have someone who can pass, who can shoot. At the moment, we don't have a player who can shoot. We only have a passer in that team. In in, in someone like um, Kai Havard, who was who, uh, who knows how to pass and when to when to pass ball to a player. But what we're missing in Akim Zayed is. Someone who can go one v one with a player and also shoot from any distance. That's kind of player would be seen. That, yeah. People say people doesn't rate him that much, but when we when we look at the Champions League um, in the highest, the way at him, it doesn't say one place. He moving from the right wing to the left wing to the middle. He can play across the winger, across the wing, and across the midfield. But it's been injured. So the issue is he needs to work his way up. 
or just to be fully fit. That's why people kind of bashing Lampard about uh, it's not useless. But Lampard already said it. It's not one hundred percent fit at the moment. We don't want to get the, the but risk. But he's coming. Fit. Yeah, the risk. He is. He's fit. He's coming, and he'll play at Southampton. So yeah. Do you believe he is the missing piece? What do you? What are you expecting from the edge? I think, yeah, I think he is the missing piece we're missing in the Chelsea team. Because people people may say, yeah, it's not, it's not that. But I think as a Chelsea fan now, I understand the way Lampard wants to play in that team. I completely understand. Or I think all the reliance will be on um, Akim Ziyech to be the delivery player. For him to just be the player, give him the ball, let him deliver. Give him the ball, let him deliver. That's what Lampard wants to do at the moment. He wants to be the creative player in that team. Let Akim Ziyech do what he wants to do. Timo Werner, Kai Havertz, Christian Pulis. Mount him. You mean so, I'm ham, shut up, I'm ham, because shut up. Because we didn't mention Mount, like, shut up. Abdullah, he did not Zidane. He did not Zidane. But, like, what I see in the way Lampard wants to play is, there, in which he wants to play, there's not going to be missing much in that, in that team because he wants to play 4 2 3 one formation. And I'm very sure playing the 4 2 3 one formation, there's no way you're going to play Mason Mount. So I think... Bro, don't... Have... <laughs> bro, all right. The, the way that this guy writes for Mounts, man. Yeah, he'll, yeah. He'll but the last match against Palace, he, he did not play him. And the, when they, when he was they resting him because he was resting him. No, he said when they interviewed him, he said because the players had, had not jailed yet and no, no chemistry or relationship with the players yet. That was the reason he had been playing out of position. He said, ZH is out. Police is not fit yet. He said that's the reason he had been playing out, out of position. But the moment he said once they are fit, he's going to be playing Mount out of, the, out of being a substitution player. Coming in from the sub and play. Look, I'll lie, my friend. What is Ziyech going to do this season, man? And just tell me, what's what's this guy going to do this season? Uh, I think, um, in, in terms of, is it in terms of goal scoring or assist? Performance, 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 overall performance. Average, not so good, so so. Uh, I think I'm gonna say above average because we have to wait for him to play like consistent matches, maybe three, four, five matches to gain his match fitness before we could say anything. At the moment, he's injured. So we thank have to you. give him... Thank you. Thank you for ruining my excitement. I'm not ruining your excitement. I know. Thank, thanks for it's, 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 thank you. Yeah, be, yeah, better it's, 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 yeah, better thanks, make the Champions League semi-final, bro. Yeah, better make the Champions League semi-final. Thanks for guys. swallowing the party. Thanks for swallowing the party. Hey, guys, I've got a question for you. Oh, I've got God. a question. What, what now? Just just answer. What? Okay. What do you want? Um, who, what do you regret most? The fact that Ronaldo introduced uh, McDonald's to Real Madrid... Or the fact that uh, Hazard went to Real Madrid. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much for tuning into the Saturday Hangout. And we sh- remember to like the vid. Remember to subscribe. Oh, wait, hey, hey, one thing, so one <sighs> no, you can't. Because <laughs> we're finished. No, no, no. We're finished. We're finished. We're finished. We're finished. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, everybody like that. I'm sorry for some of the brick analysis that you've had to hear from this clown. Yeah. I'm ham and so forth. But it is what it is. But it's, it's what you have to come to expect from this Saturday show. And we'll see you tomorrow for the Sunday Hangout. But we'll see you back in with this panel next Saturday. Remember to like. Remember to subscribe. Remember to stay sexy. I'm out. Peace out. Stay fast, 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 fast. <laughs> Thanks for watching the vid. And remember to head to the official website for the latest on my blog, rankings, bricks, and the Hall of Fame on a half of footballhot.com.